Hello and Hello. welcome to Gar Black Games. Tonight on the channel we have a special Dodeca show. Yeah. Woo! I can't quite do it justice like Matt can. It's a shame he's not on the show and he could do his Dodeca. Oh, although, you know, <laughs> something like that. I can't remember. Uh, so yeah, so tonight we're doing a we're having a little break from Coriolis while Millie has some time to prepare for the next chapter of lots of words of the thingy of the stuff of the icons <laughs> um and i thought that my game which i kick-started and thank you to all you wonderful people who supported the game um i thought it's so close to finishing that we should have a bit of a go of it so we're gonna have a few weeks of dodeca <clears throat> tonight is gonna be character creation and talking about the game so a bit of talking won't be as much action we may have a bit of pvp at the end to see how combat works if we have time but uh, I think we'll we'll kind of create characters and we will uh, build wor the world together. Now, I will say, before we go <laughs> any further, that it's not finished. And there may be a few things that need tweaking, or you may see a, a, a spelling error on a PDF uh, that Millie's going to show a bit later on. That's great. If you see things, join us on the Discord and come to the Dodeca channel and put it in there. because. That'd be great. Free editing advice is brilliant. <coughs> so if you want to do that, that's fine. We already have lots of conversations on there about justification of text and layout and stuff, which is really useful. So please come and join us on the Discord. That oh, it did work. Could be worse though, Pete. Could be a completely art-free Word document. <laughs> well, it's not going to stay that way for long yet, is it? No. Then? Anyway, before we get into all that, let's go around and say hello to everyone. Uh, we should start with Ben. Ben, hello. I saw hello. your stream yesterday. What, what was going on there? Oh, I was doing a little bit of world building for some Traveller. I've had a, a special request to have a brief stab at some Traveller for a few people. So, um, Anyone I in particular shouting at you to do that? drank a large amount of gin on Sunday night and sat down with the Traveller book and rolled a million dice. And then last night I felt the need to justify that. So I spent two hours talking about how to justify it with Cool Planets, which was nice. But they're only six-sided dice, right? They are only six-sided dice. They're half mm. as good. 50% as of value there, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> cool. Thanks, Ben. Okay, but you know what Millie? else uses a 12-sided oh. dice? What else? Descendants of Darkness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming soon to a back of kit near you. Do we, I think we have a... Don't we have a, a, a thing for that in the chat? Can't we do that? Oh, Apparently, yes, we yes, we do. Can go and, can go and have a look at that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Excellent, Ben. Uh, Millie, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. I'm good, yeah. Um, How's prep for the next Coriolis going? Good. It's good. We have an <laughs> interesting chat today about um, a way to remove darkness points from Coriolis. We have an interesting chat about that. Don't think I'm, we're going to do it, but... No, you like them so much, don't you? I mean, I do like them. we had lots of fun giving you them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that end monster would have been so much less threatening without them. I know, I know. The, the, the... I mean, it wouldn't have been anything without them, really. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't be able to come back or do the cool attacks or anything. But, but still, there was an interesting conversation about the, the merits or not merits and alternative ways to um, to fuel a Coriolis game without darkness points. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'm good. I'm we're not good. we're not doing rewells today, Ben. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Graham, Graham, how are you doing? I am week? really good. Uh, I am playing Curse of Strahd with my real person group, and I'm having fun inventing lots of um, let's just call it janky bollocks to amuse myself with them. <laughs> um, I, I literally, we I decided that I, I don't want to do any spoilers, but I'm going to add a, an, a Zara Olympics into it. Um, and my current favourite event is Spot the Turnip, where I basically Photoshop pictures of turnips, rocks and potatoes. Um, and you literally, because it's a, it's a miserable place and they have to spot the turnip. And for the final round, I'm just going to get the same picture of a turnip field and just flip it four different ways and just watch people, <laughs> watch people fall apart slightly at it. So, yeah. yeah. I, uh, is, anyone, is anyone playing a Baldrick-like character? Um, I'm going to have Strahd show up a few times as uh, different versions of himself. 
including i've got a customs form as well as in when you went to barovia you have to do like a customs form to uh declare things which uh i'm looking forward oh. to dropping oh thanks uh james the, the, um, the aspect ratio on your camera is slightly different for a reason, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I am playing on my iPad from my mum's patio in the northern part of Cyprus. And, um, it is 30 odd degrees. Um, I've been on a boat tour today. I had a barbecue. I'm drinking a beer and I'm suffering massively. It's, it's torture. It, really <laughs> sound like you're um, having a but really I'm hard that time. committed to gaming that I am here. Thank you. That's awesome. It's is it 36 also, um, degrees? It's also 20 past 11 at night here. So, you know, a bit, okay. bit <clears throat> I'm in the future. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> that, that's James saying, get on with it. Uh, so, Martin, Martin, yes. I understand there's been some LARP going no, on. I can see your oh, massive weapons in the background. Yes, we've had some fun with LARP. James has enjoyed being chased around by something he couldn't hurt for ages. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and, no, it's been great fun. It's uh, everyone's been enjoying themselves for the most part, and um, yeah, it's been good to get back to you know actually seeing people in person and interacting with them and be able to you know like touch another person <laughs> with a mace. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can't reach. It's a giant weapon. I can't reach. Oh. I can't reach. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Right, let's get on with some Dodeca then. Um, so, where to begin? Dodeca is a settingless uh, role-playing game with narrative character creation and world building, where instead of picking a set of races or ancestries or backgrounds, you roll a series of sentences, sort of narrative prompts that you then mesh together to make your character. And this will all this will become clear as we do it. Each step along the way, there are five of these sentences. Each one is a is a roll on a on a separate table. Uh, it, it gives you some points on your attributes and your skills. And I thought we should probably run through what those look like to begin with, uh, as in what a character is and how we roll dice, and therefore the relevance of attributes and skills. Ooh. Um. Let's let's get to. So you have, um, it's a D12 system, it's a dice pool system, and you roll a set of dice that is equal to the relevant attribute for a skill. And you are looking to get 11s or more on, a, on the 12-sided dice, and that is called your target number. The target number is then modified down by the number of ranks that you have in any skill beneath an attribute. So, Millie, I don't know if you could show page eight. Um, I can, hold on. It's kind of. Well, for uh, the people following page... along at home with the textbook. Oh, well, we should go page seven and page eight, actually. Um, oh, you want two pages? We've got an two, extra. No, just one at, at a time. time. We'll do page, right. page seven. It's good. It's got the attributes on. This will be a slightly different format stream for everyone uh, watching because, um, oh, look, look at that transition. That's just fantastic. It's the right shape. So there are six attributes and uh, they come in three groups. You've got your natural, your supernatural and your professional attributes. Your natural are guile and your vigor. Your guile is your natural cunning and your vigor is your kind of physicality. Under supernatural, we have occult and psyche. Now, the best way to think about these are occult is external. So I'm, I'm manipulating magical or other people externally. Um, and psyche is internal, at my own strength and my own inner ability. It's pretty cool. And then, sorry? No, just saying that's pretty cool. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> um, uh, and then you have your professional ones, which have got education and training. So education is book learning and training is kind of your physical uh, capability born from rote and practice. So sword fighting, that kind of stuff. So um, all of these begin at two. So I don't know if you guys have got character sheets or have got pen and paper. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Dodeca character sheets. Oh, fantastic. Beautiful <coughs> Piece of paper, cool. Paper. <laughs> so, um, guile, vigor, occult, psyche, education, and training, 
these will begin at two. And as we go through each of the five steps of character creation, you'll get to add a point to one of those. At each step, so you'll get five more points added onto those. That depends on what you roll on the tables. So the character creation is completely narrative. You, you can't go in saying, I want to be a strong barbarian. You just kind of roll and what, you're, you, what you get, you tailor to what you... That's the default. If you do no. want to pick from the tables, you can. We're not gonna. Yeah. We're not gonna force anyone no. to have to roll. But I love the idea of of being given a character naturally and just seeing mm. how it goes. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of going for a slightly old school feel with modern <coughs> mechanics <coughs> and mm -hmm. twists on it. So the idea is that you roll your character and you see what comes up, and then from those sentences and that kind of little mini story that you get, you then build your character. We'll come back to defenses and your wounds or hit points um, uh, later. But under each of those attributes, you'll have three skills. They nest directly underneath your attribute. And as you can see on the screen here, this is a good example. We have uh, training, the attribute. And beneath training, there are three skills, craft, prowess, and tech. Now, if you don't have any points in those, when you attempt to do something with those skills, you would roll three D12 and you would need to get an 11 or more. Yep, each one that gets an 11 or more is a success. And I'll tell you how many successes you need for a pass. Most things will just be one, but some complicated things or things that take a long time might need more than that. Now, if you get a point in a skill, that reduces that 11 by one. And you can get up to five points in a skill, therefore taking your success target number down to a the best possible six plus this is all on the character sheet so there's a little circle with a plus and you can write the number next to it to say i am an 11 plus if i don't have anything in it or do a little bit of maths to figure out your your number that's cool. from then on sorry go on james i just again just said that's cool oh. muttering to myself don't worry i think there's a bit of international lag I, i'm uh, i'm uh, finding it hard Apology. To... It's all right. No, no worries. No worries. So uh, what I'll do is I'll run through quickly what the skills are under each attribute. So we get a sense of the flavor. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go into character creation and start rolling the steps of our characters so we can start. To... Oh, Ben. Yes. Hello. Should we not do world creation before character creation so we know what sort of characters we're making for the world? Well, well, so. This is one of the things that's discussed in the book. You can begin with the world or you can begin with the characters. Because I haven't fully finished the world section, we're going to start with the characters. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some of it in there. Uh, I've got some of it in there. But uh, as you'll see, the narrative prompts, I'm trying to style them. And I have kind of mechanical outputs that I want, but I'm just trying to give them cool titles <laughs> so they're not all quite finished. So I I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, that that will come, uh, and I've, I've got a. If we if we do want to do that, I do have a, my notebook with all the all the, all the stuff in. Do that a bit later. But what you'll find is that as you roll these, you'll start to get a feel for what your character could be, and those things together might lean towards a certain genre, or a certain world, or a certain setting. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, so underneath guile, we have observe, your awareness, shadow, which is like hiding, sneaking, and other such skullduggery, and then street, which is your uh, survival in an urban environment. So finding contacts, shortcuts, hotspots, all that kind of stuff. So they're the guile skills. Um, on Under vigor, we have might, which is things like athletics, climbing, all that kind of stuff. We have ride which is, could be a, a jet-powered rocket pack, it could be a motorcycle, it could be a horse, it could be some sort of sentient squid creature underwater. If you want to get on something and ride it somewhere, oh, perfect, many, thank you. Uh, you got ride, and then you have survival, which is out in the wild, surviving. Um, under occult, we have arcane, which is the understanding of the formal and structured elements of the supernatural based on the grim dark world through which you adventure. 
So if the, when we start figuring out the world, there will be a supernatural element to it. And arcane is the skill you use if there is a structured textbook, you know, written down spells, that kind of thing, that's arcane. Manipulate is your ability to look into other people and find their weakness. This is, this is like kind of halfway towards the voice in Dune. It's like, I, I know how to pull someone's levers, press their buttons, you know, twist their knobs. Um, uh, and uh, that, that's, that's there. And then you have weird, which is kind of like, um, I can sense the force, something strange is happening. Oh my God, there's a weird thing in this area. You know, I've got I've kind of, your uh, your kind of natural feeling of the external world, like Derek Spidey sense. Spidey <laughs> sense. Yeah, yeah, Spidey sense, absolutely. Um, then under psyche skills, I've seen one thing. I need to already two things. I already need to correct in a PDF. Uh, we have composure, which is your ability to keep calm. It often opposes things that like peril, things that might freak you out. Uh, insight, which is your ability to like. Put yourself in someone else's shoes and from your own experiences, kind of understand how whether people might be lying or or how they feel. Uh, and then perform is to find that thing within yourself that can inspire other people. Um, education, we have law, which is kind of politics, iconography, society, cultures, all that kind of stuff. Uh, medicine, which is pretty self-explanatory, but kind of covers natural law as well, that kind of thing. Uh, and then tactics is the understanding of battle defense formations. It's useful in combat um, and, and warfare. Uh, and then the last group, uh, training. You have craft, which is making things and fixing things. You have prowess, which is your martial skill. And then you have tech, which is using stuff so uh tech is stuff like i know how to use a crossbow or a water pump or an electronic lock but craft is i can make an electronic lock mm. that's the the difference between those two things okay cool so <clears throat> we're going to go on to page 12 that's all right Millie. yeah and we're going to build your legend so on the character Yay. sheet there's a section called your legend and there are five sentences that need to be completed. Um, and these will tell you your origin, your source, so what you gain power from, your, a bit about your youth, so how the world treated you, your title, that for which you are or were known, and then your cause, what you're now doing while you're out in this grim, dark world. Because all these worlds are a bit horrible. The, the odds are against you. But there is something that the people are clinging on to, which is one of the things you roll in the world section. Oh, uh, the people want, and there are things such as to forget or to die on their feet. Um, and then you sort of build Reality up these TV. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, is, this is just such a, immediately, just such an uh, investable system. Like the idea that like, I was born, I trust the world taught me, like, it really gives your character such a a strong personality before you even roll the dice. It's, I'm, well, it's rocking it. a zero prep GM thing as well, because yeah. you can come into this as a GM and go, oh, I fancy doing a game, but I don't fancy putting any work into it. Roll a <laughs> couple of tables. Hey, look at that. We've got a million characters but, yeah. and a world. It's fantastic. No, I, I'm overdoing it. It's not, no, no, no. So the good it's thing about this prep. session was that I didn't I just needed to prep the whole role playing game uh, yeah. <laughs> not anything for the session so so the whole idea was you guys are going to make five characters and then we'll together we'll figure out what kind of characters they are what kind of world yeah. they fit into and then next week I'll be able to prep stuff for you guys to interact with and we'll go we'll go from there so what we do is we complete the sentences i was born i trust the world taught me people call me and i seek and these are on your character sheets. There's like a little section. Now, just, just quickly, experience works that when we've all done, we're all playing the game and someone does something really cool, you create a new sentence of your own devising, such as, I defeated Garblag in single combat. <coughs> That's cool. Plus one prowess. And then you all collectively agree when someone's done something significant and what skill 
it would improve. And then you add that to your, it's called your journey, the bit below your legend on the character sheet. So that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do now is we're all gonna roll our origin. So if we go on to, I was born. So this is a 12 sided die. That mm -hmm. best die, best polyhedral die that rolls so well, not too far, not too <laughs> short. A good size, a good heft Ooh. to it. That's, in, that's a cool one. <laughs> So Are we all rolling this, at once? We're all going to roll. Everyone okay. roll one d one twelve sided die, and this I will give you the tiniest d twelve. <laughs> <laughs> it's the smallest This gives one you ever. <laughs> this gives you an attribute point, a skill point, and a benefit. Some other benefit that you'll get, and some of these you'll look at and go, "What the hell does that mean?" And we will talk about those. Okay, so. Ben, have you rolled your die? I have. I got a 10. I was born to wealth and decadence. That's, that's legit. That seems there you that, go. That seems... There you go. <laughs> He's happy because he gets money. <laughs> uh, right, Graham? Amid storm and thunder. Oh. Ooh. Mm. Nice. nice. Mm. Millie. What's going, Millie? I was born to rule a kingdom. Oh, Ooh. of course. And its name is Gartopia. Uh, uh, Martin Beneath a dark star Oh awesome awesome! <laughs> yeah that's one of my favourite ones And uh, James what did you get I was born to muck and toil <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Okay so So Ben, ben Apologies yes. um, uh, Here we go what, what did we get we got Wealth and, wealth decadence. and decadence Okay so you get plus one to education Yeah Plus one to manipulate. So you fill in the first pip of manipulate. Don't fill in all the, the target numbers until we're kind of through all of this stage because they'll probably change. Yeah. Uh, and then 3D12 currency. So roll 3D12, please. Five. Five. Twelve. Ah! Hey. Go Decker! Go Decker! <laughs> <laughs> <Like Yahtzee. laughs> Okay, so you got 22, 22. currency. Now, it's just termed currency because we get to decide together what currency is in this world. Is it bottle caps? Is it shin bones? Is it whole chickens. eyeballs? Whole chicken. Whatever it is. I, whole I, I like fence posts. Let's do fence posts. Fence posts. <laughs> I just okay, like cool. the idea of people having to carry around huge fence posts. <laughs> weasels. <laughs> oh, yeah, weasels. We yeah, we don't have to decide now. Okay. We could decide whether, like, a weasel might be the equivalent of a fifty-pound note, but a shrew is like a fiver. What's a stoat? A stoat's <laughs> legal tender. Okay. <laughs> it's the Scottish okay. note version of a stoat. <laughs> so, so Graham, you got a mid storm and thunder, right? I did. I am. So you get you get a plus one to guile. Yep. Uh, you gain a point in composure. And you get an explorer kit. Now, there are different types of trappings in the world. We have armor, weapons, your obvious ones. We have consumables, which are things like potions, poison, that kind of stuff. We have equipment, which is kind of single items. And then you have kits. Now, kits are really cool because they are, come with a bundle of stuff and some odds and sods, some personalized items that mean you get an extra die in one skill when you use that kit. Okay. So an explorer kit, I think, is survival. Oh, we've got it in the trapping section. So when you roll survival and you're using your explorer kit, you get to add an extra die to your dice pool. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's what a kit does. And all kits relate to a particular skill, but they also have some useful items in there. So, Millie, you got uh, to rule a kingdom. <coughs> so you've got a plus one to guile. Yeah. Plus one to insight and a focus item proving your pass. Now, focus item. Mm. Some worlds, focus items are important for the supernatural element. So if it was D&D, um, uh, &D, you might have like a holy symbol. Um, if it was Warhammer, it might be a lump of warp stone. You know, some, you know, something like that. It's, it's, uh, it's an important item that, that's uh, keyed to the supernatural world. Mm -hmm. Um right, Agents Martin nobility. Yes. Yes. Uh Martin, you got beneath a dark star, so you get plus one to occult, 
mm -hmm. one to arcane and you get to select one power of your choice <laughs> powers but to are, be fair uh, you win that round they're just called powers but you can style it as magic psychic radiation infused chaos powers whatever it <laughs> comes out as in the in the <coughs> setting but they're just called powers and uh there is a there are about 10 of them in in the in the beginner game uh, and no doubt i'll i'll do more of those because they're quite fun uh, powers cost vitality which is like using up your hit points but mm -hmm. they are effective okay. um so things like shooting a, 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 a like a ray at people and killing them yeah okay and james you got to muck and muck toil. and toil <laughs> oh great so you get um a point in guile mm -hmm. uh, a point in street and a traveler kit we'll, we'll come on to the traveler kit later because it'll have right alone in your hovel your own turnip <laughs> <laughs> right it's not really okay. does have to share <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's go on to the next step then. So we shall go on to I trust. So this is what you hold dear or what you believe in. So we okay. all roll another D12. Okay. Sorry, Jane of 36 has just said in the chat, I already want multiple setting books. Well, I've already got ideas for perilous fantasy post-apocalypse i was going to call it max apocalypse because i think the obvious reference uh neon dystopia cosmic horror and grim far future but we'll we'll we'll, we'll grim far future being a slightly obvious reference as well um cool has everyone rolled you like the 39th millennium in the grim far future <laughs> mm -hmm. no, no it's no, the, the far uh, far future is at least 70th that's a 12 the yeah yeah it's got to go 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 beyond yeah yeah, yeah. 48th exactly did uh, i go so... myself at a dodeca hack before pete wrote it fully and like shared the original with me and went oh hey look i'm writing this i was like hey that's cool i wonder if it works for a victorian mental asylum oh look it does I was listening Absolutely. to a lot of Emily Autumn at the time. <laughs> I blame her. So you should. Right, we're going to go reverse order this time. Let's switch it up. James, what did you get? Um, I trust naught but steel. Oh, nice. Okay, so we'll do the we'll do the, all the points as we go around as well. Mm -hmm. so you I feel get James's to... character. So sorry, I feel James's okay. character should have a Yorkshire accent at this point. <laughs> so so you gain you gain Arthur one in Scargill. training yeah. <laughs> one in prowess and you get one skirmish armor choice now we'll come and do trappings at the end but just put uh, one skirmish yep. armor cool because we get to describe what our armor is we get to pick features and flaws for our armor and our weapons and then describe what it is based on those even if we're in space i'm playing sharp basically <laughs> right. that's cool that's space cool. sharp <laughs> start practicing how to say bastard. bastard and you've got your dialogue down a bastard um so martin what did you roll i trust dodeca only my master Oh, you <laughs> jammy git. <laughs> okay, we have a min-maxer going on. So you gain one in occult again, one in arcane oh. again, and another power. Wow. So you currently have an occult of four. You're some kind of Arcane mutant. is nine plus. So you're rolling four dice, trying to get nine plus. He's Lord. <laughs> so some spells use arcane. Some use other attributes based on what effect they're doing. So my advice to you, Martin, is to pick some powers that use arcane. Right, Millie, what did you roll? Um, I trust uh, in the natural order. <coughs> ah, that's nice. Oh. I wanted to throw one or two pleasant, slightly pleasant ones in there, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so you gain plus one to psyche, okay. plus one to medicine, okay. and a medical kit which has healy stuff in it. And when you use it you, and your medicine skill, you get an extra die. Nice. Oh. Uh, Graham. I trust in a greater power. 
for the greater, oh, the greater good. The greater good. <laughs> the greater good. <laughs> if you haven't uh, seen Hot Fuzz, don't worry, we're just crazy. <laughs> so, Graham, here we go. You get one in Psyche, yep. one in Perform, and you get to pick one power of your choice. And over to Ben. I got the weakness of others. <laughs> Ooh, wow. I trust the weakness of others. So you get one in Guile, one in Shadow, and an assassin kit. I like this. Some sort of noble assassin moving between members of the court, stabbing people up. Okay, cool. Right, so hopefully with two sentences down you guys are starting to get an idea of your character yeah. we've got sharp yeah. you know we've <laughs> got a wizard you know or some <laughs> sort of psychic or something yeah. so it's starting to take shape so what we'll do is we'll go on to the next step um here we go the world taught me yeah so if everyone could please roll a d12 It's not come up yet, but if if like two of us were to roll the same thing, would you would you re-roll? Well, or good, would you... I would allow one of you to re-roll if you wanted to. I'll, I I have uh, in my mind, I envisage 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 a deck of cards, oh. and there are twelve I was born cards, and you all draw one, and I was <laughs> the world taught me, and you can all draw one, but. Rolling, rolling these lovely, beautiful twelve-sided dice. Goals. What else could you want to do? Stretch we've, already, goals. we've already done the Kickstarter's done, but I, I have do just put a link to back a kit in the chat. You can still order this. You can get a PDF. There's also a physical copy, and if you buy the physical copy, you also get the little A5 mini screen that we've done uh, that we're doing uh, to hide your dice rolls behind. Those lovely Ooh. twelve-sided dice. I'm right, right back it just for that. <laughs> it's got, it's got, it's got the screen cover art, the 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 cover art you can see there by Diogo Nogueira, and on the flip side, it will have some of the interior art by Mustafa Bakir, both fantastic artists, and just so capture the feel of what I was trying to do. Um, and the the inside will also have like uh, short rules summaries, you know. Like a little, like a little thing. Will I be able to do that when I get back home? I'm still. I'm yes, it's yeah, because it's taking me ages to finish this bloody thing. No, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yes, there's still some time left. Uh, <laughs> for some um, this is what they don't tell you about your first yeah. Kickstarter. Is it looks really easy on the front end, but on the back end, holy mm. crap! On a stick, there's a lot of work. Yeah, it, there, there is, there is, but I think I'm good for another one soon. Uh, anyway, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, right. Let's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna mix it up this time. Millie, we're gonna go with you first. All right. What did you roll? The world taught you. The world taught me a dark truth. Oh, nice, nice. <clears throat> okay, so you get plus one to occult. Yeah. Plus one to arcane, and then as you'll see with all of these, you get one skill rank of your choice. Ooh. This is where you get to personalize a little bit as well. So even if two people did roll the same one on this step, there is a bit of flexibility there as well. And you can start the same on this step. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, I, I, will, I will pick a street. I'm going to give myself a street. Okay, cool. Right. Cool. Like it. Uh, cool. As people were asking about um, dystopia, um, neon dystopia or disco dystopia in the chat. Cool. Right. Uh, okay, Ben. Yeah. Um, I also got a dark truth. Do you want to uh, re-roll it? I think I might re-roll it. Okay, go for it. That's fine. Uh, it says in the book, you, you don't. You can pick if you want to, but just the rolling is quite fun. And it gives you that role-playing challenge, like James was saying earlier on, you know, to to kind of get this character and go, right, how am I going to, what do I make of this? And what's, how do I, how do I play this? Okay, it's a weird one for the character. I've got yep. the old ways. Ooh. Unless Ooh. Martin's already got that one. <clears throat> So you get plus one to a cult. Wish. I came close again. <laughs> <laughs> plus one in weird. And a skill rank of your choice. So maybe oh, the... I think I will take <clears throat> a point in law. Okay, cool. Um let's go across to James next. 
How did you um, the world taught me that action must be taken. <laughs> Industrial <laughs> action <laughs> must be taken. <laughs> he Gets really is short of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh no, that means you're gonna die though. Yeah, yeah, but not just survives anything. One. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And he um, survived sharp, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He's sharp. And he everyone's sharp. called sharp something. So you know. <laughs> um, okay, so you get plus one to training. Plus one to might, and then a skill rank of your choice. Uh, I'm not sure what skill I shall take. Um, probably, I don't think psychic skill or occult skills suit me. Probably might or survive. I might hit survival. Okay. I'll try and book the trend of Sean Beam and take survival. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Bourne. <laughs> Bean Bean. Oh, Sean Bourne. There's a crossover for you. Sean Bean is Jason Bourne. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, Graham, what did you roll? Uh, I rolled... Which one did I roll? I rolled the, the power one. Knowledge is power. I picked my dice up ah, to remember them. Okay. So, yes, okay. I was... Uh, I trust the greater power and coincidentally believe that knowledge is power. Uh, right. Do I have to choose there a skill go. rank now or can I roll the next couple of dice uh, and then I don't mind. It? You can do it when you want. That's yeah, fine. I don't know what will fit the yeah. character at the moment. Cool, that's cool. Um, so you get uh, plus one to education and plus one to law. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. Right, and last but not least, Martin, I might the have played evil this wizard. In a, in a disc world game before. I, um, so mine is that death comes soon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you get plus one to psyche, mm -hmm. plus one to medicine, mm -hmm. and a skill rank of your choice. Is the just to talk about the skill ring? So they're the guile, vigor, occult, psyche, education, training. No, no they're like no, they're attributes. Your attributes. The skills the... are the pips underneath. The... Ah, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. The okay, right. Like, so we've all done the world taught me that kind of thing. Yeah. Indeed. <clears throat> Excellent. Let's go on to people call me. This is what you were. This could be what you've been known up till now. What you're still known as. Um, so let's all roll a d12 once again and uh, we'll see what we get. Oh, wow! Interesting ones. <laughs> <laughs> gonna have like James is gonna be like super combat character, and, and Ben's gonna be able to kill anyone secretly or manipulate anyone. Sure, what well, Martin's a wizard, but or maybe a psyker, don't know. It's hard. Cool. Okay. Ben, what did you roll? They call me Hot Stepper. Not the list, is it? Um, a, a meddler, they call a me. Meddler. A meddler. Oh, perfect. 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 Okay, so you get plus one to occult, plus one to manipulate, and an assassin kit. Don't you already have an assassin kit? I do kit? already have an assassin kit. You have an option. You can have another assassin kit, or you can exchange it for the funds that it costs. I might exchange it for the funds. <clears throat> Rich man. They're already I'll be loaded. minted. Yeah. yeah. Someone has to be. That's a lot of money. But it's either that or you have more poison and another weapon. A strong point, you but could funds those. can also be exchanged for other goods and services. That's can't very we? true. That's true. You could double assassinate someone, says Bubble Reg in the chat. <laughs> That's very true, too. Okay, while you consider that, Graham, what did you roll? I rolled the same as last time. I rolled a nine, so the world considers me a rebel. Ooh. A rebel? Indeed. Wow. Indeed. Cool. Okay, so you get... Smashed it power state. And you are all sheep. <laughs> plus one psyche, mm -hmm. plus one insight, and one Six. thrown weapon choice. Because rebels all like chucking things. <laughs> yes, Molotovs, I would assume, but yes. <laughs> you can get thrown items with the blast trait. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, Millie, what did, what did you get? Um, uh, people call me an oracle. Ooh. 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 Interesting. So Ooh. plus one occult, plus one weird, and one power of your choice. Got a few people with powers now, haven't we? 
Um, excellent. Right, and Martin. Uh, people call yeah. me an outsider. Oh. No wonder. Oh. Mm-hmm. Weird, wizard <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> weird wizard who believes in death. Is that a necromancer? Is, is Martin a necromancer? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, so plus one education, plus one medicine, and a medical kit. Oh, someone's going to slay Nightbot. Oh, it's it's, it's Spider Pat. Queen Long. Yeah, <laughs> Spider Queen hey, Long Pat. posted Stop. two two comments and was immediately timed out because <laughs> there were four hundred capital letters in them. Yeah, uh, up and went, oh my god, don't decorate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and James, what did you get for people call me? People call me a leader. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay, okay. So you get a point in guile, a point in composure, and a commander kit. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So then we're going to go on to our final step in your legend. And this is I seek. Uh, revenge is one option. Um, uh, and various other things. So we're going to roll another 12 sided die. Beautiful 12 sided <laughs> dice. Look at them roll. Will it just gently roll across <coughs> that dice tray? I don't know what you've rolled, James, but I'm really excited to find out. <laughs> well, I it's think we'll just, probably. Is it perfect? Everything has been perfect. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. So the, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I you seek to destroy guy. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, sorry, to destroy evil. That's the one. Okay. Okay. James, what did you roll? I rolled an eight. I seek. Um, and oh no, sorry, I rolled a nine. Um, oh. it's the worthy opponent. Oh, cool, cool, excellent. So, plus it's one training. Moves. What's your training up to now? Five. Okay, cool. Really? Uh, plus one prowess and one skill rank of your choice. Again, another step where you get to make a bit of free form choice about how you want your character to go. Um, Martin, what did you roll? I seek. Ultimate power. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, you can't have it. It's mine. Oh, <laughs> oh did you roll that, Graham? I did indeed, yes. It's my ultimate oh, power. Oh well you two have some mm. do you do you I both want to have it? Or... Ultimate power given his bad guy shtick. But you could both be that means I can be the rebel to some I'm his nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Lo- loyal going? henchman not. <laughs> Star scream. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so ultimate power gives you plus one occult, plus one arcane, one skill rank of your choice. Hmm. Um, so, Graham, prefer? if you want to stick with that, feel free. If you want to roll again, or uh, Martin, if you want to roll again, I don't know why you'd want to roll again on that one, Martin. But I it's mean... up to you. I think mm, I will roll out. again. There are um, a few options sure. that would be a bit narratively better. But... Is there one you want to pick, Graham? No, I'm going to let the dice that. roll. If, gonna if gonna I roll dice. the same oh, cool. one, then I roll like the it. same one. That's fine. Yep. I mean, I, I mm-hmm. quite like save my people uh, to okay. end an era. Sounds good. But the dice say... That's all very rebel statements. It does. Yeah. It does. Uh, oh, I've got the same as James. No, no I'm just throwing dice everywhere. <laughs> Fine, we're going to take a three. I seek fame and fortune. Fair enough. Okay, then. cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so plus one guile, plus one survival, and one skill rank of your choice. Okay. Oh, the show uh, must go on. Mm-hmm. Then. Oh, sorry, Millie. We, I jumped yeah. from Martin to Graham. Sorry, Millie. What did you get? Revenge. Hey. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Revenge. I need to go inside, unfortunately, <gasps> briefly. Um, uh, ben, what did you get? I also got revenge, but I'll re-roll it. So let's oh, tell no, Millie what she want... gets. Millie, what you get for why don't revenge? You, why don't you guys all run through your legends then with the audience and start mm-hmm. to have a discussion about what your characters uh, could be? Yeah. Uh, and uh, when I come back, we'll just summarise all the stats for everyone. <laughs> I love it. Um, but I will be back very soon cool. hopefully we got the same before ben so do you want me to re-roll i don't mind no it's cool i'll re-roll because i re-rolled and i got a lost treasure oh okay that's and that cool. sounds kind of funky 
Unless um, you want the so, re-roll, in which case I'll keep the revenge. I don't mind. No, 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 no. It's fine. So, I'll keep. We'll have a nice off. No, you pay. I'll pay for the tea. No, no, it's fine. I, I, to old I... ladies in a garden centre. Oh, as long as we're going to go Mrs. Doyle, then we're okay. Recap their characters first. Um, I haven't decided who. It's an odd mix. I mean, I think Martin and I's characters are pretty nailed in, so one of us should. I'll do mine first if you want. Yeah. <laughs> While yeah, you're all you still. Can. So, the four, the five things I rolled is. Um, hang on, let me just find the right wording. So I. I was born in muck and toil, <laughs> and I trust naught but steel. <laughs> the world taught me that action must be taken, and people call me a leader. I seek a worthy opponent, because I've found none so far. And I'll. <laughs> so basically, my character is clearly some kind of veteran, grizzled, bastard soldier who's yeah. going to soldier on until somebody finally kills him. <laughs> like Cohen the Barbarian style kind of. Yeah, just, I've lived too long and I need to die. Will somebody please be good enough to fight? <laughs> yeah. You need a pithy quip like for when you go down. Like an old space captain or an old, like a, a knight. Um, I can see a grizzled future science, cyberpunk mercenary with like, like, like Zillion in uh, Coriolis kind of, yeah. full of bionics. That kind of like, yeah, it's, it's. A no nonsense, just fight till you die, very grounded character. So I, I kind of fits brilliant. I know exactly what I'm doing with it. Someone will do that Indiana Jones thing where that guy leaps out and starts waving the swords around and he just yeah. shoots him. Yeah. Nice. Go on then, Martin. You're the bad guy. So Yeah, clearly I'm the, the actual bad guy here. Um, <laughs> so I was born beneath a dark star. I trust only my master. The world taught me that death comes soon. People call me an outsider and I seek ultimate power. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, we're in an adventuring party with this maniac. <laughs> I'm also good with the in the chair, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I am very good with a bandage. Come here. <laughs> no, no. You might be evil, but your bedside manner is on point. Necromancer is a master of life and death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, Hi, Graham, what have you got? I'm quite undecided. I, at the moment, I'm sort of thinking, am I going to be like um, a Lex Luthor, Doc Ock sort of person? Uh, someone suggested Han Solo. So, uh, sadly, I don't think his legend works with the rest, of the, uh, sorry, the Bourne part. So, I was born amid storm and thunder. I trust a greater power. The world taught me knowledge is power. And then the bit that kind of throws it off is that uh, people call me a rebel and I seek ultimate power. Um, Daenerys Targaryen. It's almost word for word her background, isn't it? Mm. It could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am undecided who or what they shall be at the moment, but uh, I, I quite like Han Solo as a character. But uh, I will, I don't know. We'll play and find out. I think. Millie, where are you at? Um. I was born to rule a kingdom, um, and I trust in the natural order. Uh, up to this point, I was thinking they were quite like Captain Carrot, um, but then the world has taught me a dark truth, and people call me an oracle, and I seek revenge. So it's wow. like Captain Carrot, who who was like, no, no, I should be in charge. And shit. the world is shit. Yeah. You didn't grow up in a mine. You mm. grew up with the lords and ladies. Yeah, it's like I, lo I love the idea that you were you were like born to rule a kingdom, but the world taught you that that means jack shit, and mm. someone took it from you, and you were like, but it, but it's mine, and like nah, nah. Yeah. Remember that a kingdom doesn't have to be a kingdom. It could be a corporation, for example. Oh yeah, it could be corp. Oh yeah. My, my... A hostile takeover. Hostile a wizard takeover. school. Uh, yeah, what have uh, you? Seek revenge. A book club. Let's yeah. go trash their <laughs> a public book club. branding. Yeah, let's let's go kind of 1950s suburban role play and like, oh no, <laughs> this was my Tupperware party that you've taken out. And then <laughs> some yeah, MLM they room. brought the <laughs> same like, dish but better. Power. <laughs> Ultimate so, power is obviously winning dish of the day. 
Yeah. <laughs> Martin's power I'm over life and dish. death on, is all this, because all this, they have Tupperware. 1940s housewives competing about social yeah. agenda. And who can get the most influence? As a rebel, I, I bring like non kosher yeah, food. <laughs> there is, I, I keep meaning to buy it, but I did read about um, a role playing game where you play as like grandma solving crimes in like northern Canada. It sounded yes. really quite cool. Oh, yeah, what's That's it pretty called? Cool. It's, it's based off of Murder She Wrote, isn't it? It is indeed, yes, yes. And I thought, you know what, I know a few people that that would be great fun with. So mm. it'd make a fun afternoon one shot. Let's do it. it. I, yeah. I 100% like the grandmother's just like, yeah, I've, I've made a pie. Wasn't it? I much Make prefer it. the conspiracy theory that Jessica Fletcher is actually the murderer and that what she does is she goes around fitting up other people for the crimes she's committed. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but I was that born to wealth and decadence. I trust in the weakness of others. The world taught me the old ways. People call me a meddler, and I seek a lost treasure. Mm. That's a lot of different directions. That really, it is. Isn't it? There's, there's mm. a sort of, but there's this sort of thread that runs through it of this sort of ancestral entitlement, almost. Mm. So I'm getting a strong sense of, um, well, that. Do you know? I think mine is a warlock. Yeah. I was born amid storm and thunder. I trust a greater power. Knowledge is power. People call me a rebel, and I seek ultimate power. I'm either a warlock or a Sith at this point, I think. Oh, 100%. Sort of, yeah, some sort of religious, like, storm and thunder makes me think of, uh, like, Sigmarites. Okay, yeah. yeah. Kind yeah. of like I was I mean, born. yeah, it doesn't have to mean literally lightning and, and weather. It could just it could be just an be argument, be yeah. Drama, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Drama and pomp. And you were born in the middle of an argument about whose fault it was that you were being born. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want it. I don't want it either. You're never coming near me with that thing again. <laughs> uh, what about attributes? Because at the minute, I'm looking like uh, an occult genius. I've got occult and education. Guile, psyche, and education are my best ones. Four, four, and three. Yeah. That's why I was thinking, like, technology sort of person. I've got training five in dial four and everything. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> yeah. So Ooh. training is my big thing. Looks like I'm going to be the stabby, punchy guy. Yeah. You're the muscles. Yeah. <laughs> but, but mind you, training also fills into, like, craft and tech. So you could yeah. be this... Yeah, maybe this... it'll be like a no-nonsense engineer kind of thing. Yeah, like this old artificer who's, who's been through making siege weapons. Doesn't matter if you make them, you're still going to die. You know, yeah, that kind of stuff. I kind of like that, yeah. But you'll be dead next week. <laughs> That's brutal. What a morbid, <laughs> morbid man. Yeah. yeah, a rock-hard kind of rigger that clings to the outside of a spaceship and... Fastens bolts with a spanner. Like, you're not wearing an exosuit. I can hold my breath. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> wearing fingerless gloves just to be hard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Smoking it like a roll up tab on the side of a spaceship. Like, fuck you. Like, know. inside your helmet with the cigarette. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's just the helmet. He hasn't got the it's rest of the space suit. Yeah, it's the helmet. Maybe some kind of jock strap and fingerless gloves. That's uh, <laughs> that's James's space outfit. I feel. Yeah. There's an image we really did not need. <laughs> hey, I didn't put any Bond's body on that image. You were adding that all by your own. Occult is my best stat. That's a four, and then Guile, Psych, and Training are threes. So I've got. We're quite an occult heavy group. Hmm. Apart from me. Apart and me, from to you. be fair. Even though I was... Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, three out of five, to be fair. Yeah, so. is a, a three is group. still... It's better than yeah. two. Mm -hmm. I'm a cult two. Vigor two, a cult two, psyche two, education two. <clears throat> Very basic. I can hit stuff, and that's it. Basic sharp. Yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah, I mean, my I don't. I've got an odd bunch of skills. Like I've got observe, survival, composure, insight, perform. I sound like a motivational speaker. Um, Are you a bard? Law. Sorry. Are you a bard of some sort? Yeah, you're a bard. You think? 
Storm and Thunder. I was born at a gig. Could be, could be. Not so much a bard, more a sort of um, rabble the, rouser. So you're yeah, the, the, the noise and the light. Come, comrades. Over the I barrier know, we yeah. go, kind. Uh, I don't know. I might make Like a in. shit stirrer. <laughs> That's the. And the other it, shit stirrer who goes. It might be uh, a genre I'll mixing give you 20 musician. Quid if you do. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. That guy will give you 20 quid if you do. Yeah. I, okay. I can afford it. Knowledge. I've just seen how much I can trade in my assassin second assassin's kit for, and it's a lot. So, <laughs> if we're going to have like weasels as currency, does that mean like rich people like have to carry along like a cart full of capybara, like rodents or currency essentially? Like, no, but the first we, time you we've only got gerbils, your, you've got a capybara. First time you have to trade in your megatherium giant sloth. Yeah, it's, it's really the, awkward uh... for making change. The commonest problem of having to have a pocket full of rats, whereas the <laughs> rich people just have like one badger and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. we should be nice to Pete and not use small mammals as currency. Uh, or we could no. let dice decide. <laughs> <laughs> it partly depends on what kind of world we want to build as well. Whatever it is, uh, very serious. Or space rat. <laughs> Chat are quite keen on us building a sort of shadow runny sort of um, dystopia thing uh, you think like your that, character yeah. would work in a shadow runny dystopia is the next big question then how would think... you phrase your character if your character was a cyberpunk dystopian i mean my character is news has uh, got a survival streak um and prowess and muck and toil and snort but steel and Basically, my I could definitely see mine being like some kind of hardened archaeotex like crafter, or even basically... someone who worked in the mines and the manufactories yeah. to like toil away so the rich folk could yeah. have their ease. And like, I mean, you could even turn it to the the fact that I trust naught but steel in that I'm a new wave like. You only cybernetic. trust robots. You don't trust yeah. people. No, you could be like anti tech. Like, like, yeah, you don't, don't trust like clones or arms and metal legs. Yeah, just good old iron. Yeah, Martin, how would you roll in a dystopian setting? I mean, mind charge. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No. No, I think we might be overthrowing the people in charge <laughs> based on our power spread so far. I mean, that is the ultimate power, isn't it? To be in charge. <laughs> Probably the eminence crease. Mm. Yeah. Um. So, would you be a necromancer or would you be looking more at being like a cyber surgeon? Um, I mean, I've got very obviously my skill, my high skills are occult, arcane, and medicine. So, Ooh. two powers. <laughs> Carvus, you've, made, you've accidentally created Carvus. Back again. Mm -hmm. This time he's evil. More evil. Yep. <laughs> but but then the other like what did you say a cult um medicine and okay uh, yeah so so that, if it was like a cyberpunk dystopia would the arcane be more like the hacking kind of thing uh, or or what sure, how would that sure. check in with pete but, you have like, the book of root codes yeah there's it's there's three types of supernatural stuff isn't there trying to yeah. Um, trying to work out what it is. So, okay. Oh, okay. It's a formal one, isn't it? So that's yeah. The... So like yeah. the formal sort of. I mean, you could be even some kind of like nuva mutant. Like um, there is magic you know, in like Shadowrun. Um, mm. Total Recall with what is it? Quarta? What's mm. his name? Like that kind of thing. Mm. Oh, the weird little mutant guy. With uh, the baby six belly. Kids to feed. Uh, mm. The taxi driver with his yeah with the arm yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He could be a mutant. Just trying to, just or like some sort of amoral backstreet cyber doctor. Like, yeah, Wizard. sure. Ghost I'll, in the um, shell. Yeah, ghost in the shell style ghost stuff. Ghost in the shell type stuff. Yeah, totally. I mean, better. that works pretty well with my character in the sense if you're the kind of weird creative going like, ah, I can make you better. I need these electronics and metal. And I could be like, ah. Oh, all right, then I'll go down the forge and make that shit for this crazy weirdo. 
Yeah, it could be like a, an outfitter type thing. Be a doctor and also a sort of um, place your limbs with some cyber <coughs> ones and put yeah. nanites in your blood. And I'll just be the one that makes it. They don't do anything, you just weigh you down. <laughs> 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 really heavy nanites. What about you, Millie? How do you reckon world wise? Um. Because we're going to have to think of that in a minute. Well, if, if we're on this kind of, um, I was born to, you know, cyber tech, born to rule the kingdom kind of thing, then some sort of like, because mine, mine is a cult as well, but then I've got guile and training and psych, so I'm a little bit of, of all of that. It'd be, it sounds like some sort of like, I did program a, a thing. I did make a a kingdom and then evil corporation 23 has <laughs> turned it into the matrix rather than a beautiful place that is that the up. one that martin runs <laughs> after um crashing out as evil corp 22 transferring all assets and the liabilities <laughs> to evil corp 23 yeah um the the dark truth <clears throat> is Whatever you create is turned into crap because of evil corporation, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you tried to make something good and they take it from you and ruin it. Yeah, or like the subscription is now putting people into indentured servitude for this, this utopia I coded or whatever kind of thing. And so I seek revenge. 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 That kind of stuff. Um... That, that that sort of thing, perhaps? I yeah, think I'm going to be a journalist. Be a I, journalist. I think now we're, we're knowing cause what the world is, and I think journalists, because Storm and Thunder, some kind of event, some big event. It doesn't that, necessarily need to mean you were, like, that's your birthday either. People were aware of you. You rose to fame during... During that period. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Oh, Storm fair enough. Mm. Or it yeah. could be, that, actually, you know, that if makes you wanted really to make it sense, about your birthday... Like, I was just supposed to report on the local cat show and something enormous happened and suddenly I'm the face of that sort of thing. Um, greater power. Okay, yeah, that's the truth, I guess. Um, that's the world quite taught cool. me. Yeah, like knowledge is power. Not exactly that, but more that um, the, the knowledge you're power. given. I, you know, controlling the knowledge is the power. Um, oh, I'm yeah. a rebel because either perhaps I either create oh, the news What's or the, I, I um... want to tell the truth. What's the Netrunner faction, Graham? That's the media one. Oh, it's MBN. MBN. Yeah, and um, like that kind of thing. That like the MBN, you're powerful if you control what people consume, and you can kind of exactly, dictate yeah. to them. Yeah. yeah, and that's the ultimate power. That's where it comes in. So uh, whatever I say gets accepted as truth. No yeah, you're Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> Well, I could be yeah. a good Rupert Murdoch, but if we're in a Absolutely. team with Martin, yeah, now we've got a setting. I can fit my legend to it much better, I think. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to be the techno journalist or the news corp. Yeah, so I, I, I'll i be the the kind of metal crafter engineer, the no-nonsense engineer that somehow ended up working for Evil Corporation 23 under the guise of Martin's crazy... I can make a man a machine in vision. The Corporation and... 23 are the bad guys. Yeah, and that's and I'm just doing my job. Um, I, like I like it. Just... Corporation right. 23 are the bad what? guys. I trust yeah. only my must be some sort of weird rogue AI I'm listening to. That's pretty oh, cool. What is it? Um, I like to think that you live in a basement and it's probably your mum or your landlord. Soul <laughs> is in the machine. <laughs> No, it's like, of interest, go away, mom, um, I'm trying to be evil. Has the AI and it rings them up and is that what is that the one I'm thinking of? Person Sorry, of interest? Again? Yeah, the person of interest AI, is the one where the there's AI. an AI that's determined who's gonna get murdered. And then so so a higher Oh thing. Bubble Wretch has just mentioned Transmetropolitan and I can't let that slide because oh my god, I love that comic. Spider Jerusalem I... is a legend. I think I read the first episode. Or the first, first episode issue. is the only one I no longer have because somebody borrowed it and never gave oh, no. it back. It wasn't me. Um, it wasn't me. And, that, and I meant to read the rest of it and I never did, but I'm going to actually make they a note of myself to go and buy it after so this because I really are, liked it. They're the Warren Ellis of. at his absolute finest. 
just yeah, the, the way he handles the storytelling and weaving the narrative and the whole corrupt government <clears throat> cyber dystopian future with all kinds of weird mental tech stuff going on is fantastic. So yeah, let's make that a real thing. I think I might have to go down the sort of influencer conspiracy route. You're David Icke. No, no, <laughs> Blizzard. I, Blizzard I'm definitely people. not. He's from here, you know. He doesn't live too far from me. Really? I taught one of his kids once. Wow. Oof. And uh, yeah, but no, I've got a cult of four, but I've got manipulate and weird in there. I've got an education of four with law and tactics in there. Got a little bit of guile and some shadows, and I've got a little bit of composure. So I'm thinking not so much. Um, I'm the conspiracy theorist who's right and they're trying to debunk and the lost treasure that I'm seeking is some kind of data file that proves there's huh. an, oh, Martin, if there's an artificial intelligence that is actually speaking to you through the computers, yes, I know it exists and I want to find it, but yeah, Neuromancer. Mm. Um, the AIs in Neuromancer that were just being born onto the internet towards the end of it that cropped up in the sequel. There were intelligences being spawned by networked computer systems that were becoming complex in a way that they only could be online. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my assassin side of things is um, digging up the dirt on someone and destroying their careers. I like yeah, it. Yeah, not physical assassination. Not like, physical assassination. Like, yeah, I'm not like shanking that. folk. I'm uh, I'm finding the leverage. Yeah. Career suicide. Like, no. Nope. Character yeah, assassinations. Work. Yeah, that's the one. So we're Maybe, the leverage yeah. squad the, um, in a cyberpunk dystopia. Did you used the, the, to be in some yeah, kind yeah, of military yeah, then for your tactics? No, I'm oh. outrageously wealthy. I'm a genius wealthy kid. So you like, become an yeah, influencer off the back of that. Is the one that Martin listens to, and it's the it's the one that took over the company that Millie was supposed to run. And it's like no, I this... think it was created by the company that Millie was supposed yeah. to run, and that that company are the bad guys, and that and they're then, trying uh, to get it back under their control. Graham's <coughs> character is trying to expose the truth of all that, and you know it's true, but no one believes you because you're an outcast kind of conspiracy theorist and i'm just there uh, hitting metal against metal yeah. i probably made it <laughs> but maybe not but you may have that would be interesting, some actually. parts towards oh, its build what if the code is like uh it's molecular as in like electron shells so he did yeah. actually make it but he'll never know because he just forged something really complicated it might just yeah, be I just small wrote blocks the code. of metal i don't know what but, she's uh, for he doesn't Oh, I cover he's just hitting metal, not realizing yeah, it's some, creating some like kind of like... electron shells that are code. Yeah. So, so we've got this. Why it's easy to hide as well. Oh, we've already got, written we're just carrying the internet around the box. Yeah. We've got this sort of sentient AI that is a power of some kind, a good guy in some form. We've got Corporation 23, who Millie should own but doesn't because she's been screwed out somehow. You transferred your shares into the wrong kind. Yeah. The board screwed over your family or something. Yeah, like mm -hmm. there was a, like that, I, where Bruce Rain bought all the shares. I didn't because I was too busy coding a Utopia and they were too yeah. busy advertising it at like $499 I like a minute. That there's there's some kind of face for Corporation 23, like a person or a, like, I don't know, John Smith or whatever. And he's actually the face of this AI. He doesn't actually exist, but he's on all the promotional material and just speeches on TV and shit. And the AI doesn't work for 23. The AI is liberated and out there and they're trying to track it down and stop it. And we're trying to track ah. it down and help it. I think Millie owned 22 oh, cool. and they transferred all the assets and stuff into 23. That's why you don't own anything. You own like a dead company with just liabilities. Yeah. Or your patents. Oh, James, um, Leon's just said, 
I trust naught but steel could mean that you rely more on fundamentals. So in a cyberpunk world, you're into free software. You don't trust proprietary stuff. You take everything apart and understand its fundamental code and that you don't like black box sealed owned items. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Free, That's a good um, way of looking at it. Freeware champion. So like, we're all yeah. information. We're hackers. I love it. We're all hackers. Yeah. I, I'm basically... I'm a I'm a coder that doesn't believe in ownership of data. Information is free, people. <laughs> and Martin, then that information is communicating with you. It's your master, except it's not a master. It's more like a muse. Did you guys ever see Space Above and Beyond? I think that was what it's. No, it's not called that. Uh, blood, and, blood and crow. There was something called that. It was it's fairly old. I'm thinking nineties and the there was something on the internet like a huge AI from the future. It was really quite good. Or maybe it was a time travel thing. There was the time travel one where the the, the, the AI the AI was sending information and people's consciousness back in time. No, no, not travelers, no, much earlier, like oh, fifteen okay. or twenty years ago. Um, some kind of yeah, it was a guy was an astronaut, but he was going forwards in time. Seven days, that's what it was called. Seven days had a big like AI consciousness existing on the internet, sending messages to people, um, and it reminded me of that. But I couldn't quite remember what I was talking about. So oh, there we go. We're, we're vibing a setting already, and we've worked out how our characters so what we've done is we've taken something that could quite easily have just been a bunch of sword and sorcery basic hacks and then reskinned it for a cyberpunk dystopia yeah i'm cool with that so yeah. i've got um so my my youth is the world told me that death comes soon and i cause seek ultimate power i'm feeling like i want to i want to upload my consciousness to uh, uh, because I yeah. think death comes soon is mortality is temporary, and I have this AI in my head. And I want to join my master. I want to upload myself. Want to up, yeah, that's cool. um, you're looking at cortical you're on... stacks as um, immortality hey, treatment flux. elite programming. You are the next phase of of humanity. You're person 3.0. You mm -hmm. are the machine. Like, I'll build it for you. I'll make the machine. <laughs> that can accept your brilliant mind. I've taken, I've looked at the box powers as well. Um, oh, yeah. oh, I need to do that. The two I've taken have got blur and ray of doom. <laughs> I need to, I need to um, re-thematicize those to uh, well, ray so of mood. What does blur actually do? So do we have it the book? looks like it's some it's form of PDF, haste, yeah, but, uh, I can tell. Does it make you quicker, or does it make your image some like stim jack thing? It, yeah, it makes people quick. It accelerates people, so it makes them quicker. So you've got yeah, an inbuilt it... stim jack, yeah, something that triggers your adrenals <clears throat> so and kicks you into it, high gear. Stim hack. But it's, it can do it to anybody, any willing creature, I should say. Um, so... so you have drugs then. You've yes. manufactured drugs that you um, can use, or nanites. You said nice. you wanted nanites. So you've got these nanites that'll do this one turbo boost acceleration nanites on your adrenals. Ray of doom. Nice. Destruction Ray of... nanites. It doesn't have to be destruction nanites. It could be a hack on a nearby electrical conduit that it could blasts be a out that disintegrate. Uh... Or a grey goo effect if you want it to be nanites. It says one creature, so I'm not sure if it works on things. Um, so blowing out an electrical relay to tase something at range. Put a mage brain on to think about that. Mm. Or the uh, coincidental magic. Yeah. Oh, um, non-anomaly says virtual drugs. So maybe you can download a program through the internet into something yeah, like, that uh, has the effect. Engine oh. mapping, but neural mapping. <laughs> That's kind of so. It's, yeah, are we all like connected into the to some sort of online? Well, Millie's created this online um, kingdom. Yeah, this thing online that the company are trying to manipulate thing, to yeah. make people into wage slave hmm. drones. Hmm. So presumably, everybody has some kind of base level connection, but it would take the work of a master hacker, i.e., a wizard. Yeah. 
to be able to cause feedback through that system. Yeah, I like the idea that you do have the new rule mapping because it's mm. basically what a loot box would be. If you're not good enough in your game, then make your brain 10% quicker. Side effects are your own problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I changed it to acceleration protocols so I can... Oh, Millie yeah. Veronique's just pointed out Existens is a thing. Mm, that's a pretty cool film, actually. Yeah. Uh, At least you stopped talking about Videodrome, though. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah. Um, um, there is a blast from the past. Hail the new flesh. I'm looking at the powers. And there's two of them. So, so people call me uh, an oracle. Um, one of the powers is called Augur's Eye. Uh, your inner supernatural eye pierces the veil of the future and sees what might be. Um, uh, explain how your character feels when they see the future and how the visions manifest. Um, so you meditate for one minute. Um, roll cool or weird. Uh, you may ask the GM one yes or no question about the immediate future, um, plus some extra stuffs, that kind of stuff. So. Would that be that could rather than algorithmic be algorithmic probabilism? Yeah, like no, I because there's so many people in the simulation, you can use that to logically determine what everybody else would do. Like rather the foundation than foundation series yeah. does that, don't they? They use uh, an equation to probabilistically determine likelihood of future events mm. with such a disturbing degree of accuracy that they're able to predict the future. Yeah. Or, yeah, mm. or the other one um, was um, um, Valiant Heart. So I might, rather than, uh, so okay. through your mystical power, you gird your allies into the creeping doom around them, narrate how your character imbues them with supernatural courage. Um, so rather than, rather than, um, an oracle who necessarily sees the future, an oracle who tells you what you need to hear. I've watched The Matrix recently. Yeah, recently. I was going to say, like, The Matrix yeah. one, yeah. Um, that kind of Are we stuff. in the simulation, or are we out of the simulation? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's probably something Pete's going to spring on us. Um, but, yeah. So so that kind of, like, no, wait. I've, I've seen this in, in the simulation. This is how it's going to play out, and because of that knowledge, we all are like, oh, okay, we're guaranteed to succeed, kind of thing. Um, that, those are my two, two possible powers because I have one power. Um, They're both good. I yeah. quite like mm. the second one because I like the way you described it. Yeah. Yeah. Valiant yeah, I agree. heart. Are you allowed to make your own powers up, or is there a? I, I don't know if there's a list. So. Um, there, there is, is a, list. a list of powers. Um, I can't quite share because I've got the because we're on the set essentially right, the same well, thing. I can't share it with you at the minute. Which one seems? Because there's a couple of ideas in the chat. So about linking things together. Um, so I guess like lateral thinking, uh, and another one like an anonymous source. Uh, are there any powers that correlate to that? Because I forgot I have to pick one. Um. So obviously there's Augur's Eye, which is the first one I picked, mm -hmm. which would essentially be your, your sources and that kind of stuff. Um, what else is the... Because I've got a pretty good guile and psyche, which is about the whole observing, composure, insight. Um, a little bit of shadow. Well, that's a six-hour one. I'm not sure that's, that's quite appropriate. Um... Um, yeah. Um, hmm. So, um, Veronique, Veronica suggested like a low level mentor, which, yeah. Yeah, I think the Augur's Eye is the closest one in the written ones. Okay. Um, um, and that's there you concentrate and yeah, so, pull the threads together. Yeah, pull all the threads together and then you can ask the GM one yes or no question okay. about the immediate future plus one for every success. Um, you rolled on the test. The question should relate to actions the players are about to take, but not about the outcome of dice rolls. 
uh, GM can't actually see the future and therefore allowed to not respond <laughs> to the question is is not closed or so hard to predict because many external factors affect the It's a classic outcomes. Pete statement. If so when you uh, you ask one of the questions, the GM starts writing stuff down, and you're like, I just gave you ideas. Um, right. I will go with Augur's eye then, as it sort of suggests the character theme and what the chat were the chat was suggesting as well. So we are all good. Cool. Cool. Um I need to turn a light on, it's getting a bit dark. In your your beautiful holiday location. Gosh, it's such a suffer suffering. It's just dark because it's one oh. o'clock in the morning, nearly. Oh, it is, yeah. What else do you decide about your world then? So we're going for the whole dystopia, bread and circuses via the internet, and uh, core. We might users. actually be in a simulation. Yeah, like the this this the game or the world that Millie's uh, created is the way you keep the masses under control by just focusing all their energy there. Uh, okay, so that's a very stuff. good question. Who are some of the antagonists in this world? Obviously, we've got Corporation 23. Yeah. Yeah. Assume, uh, but what can they throw at us? Because I can see the tables to roll on. Uh, um... I'm guessing, I, I don't have access to the thing, but if we're going, the corporation is the enemy, then I'm guessing corporations have their own security forces and things like that, and perhaps you only have access to medicine through corporations, that is in the whole business. Well, should we have a look at the government? world building section for yeah, Pete, yeah. so that when he comes back, we're in a position to go. So we've got building your world, uh, page 43, I think it is on the PDF. It might be on a different page. Yeah. So you've got a bunch of different sections. So when you're creating it, You've got five-step mm. process, just like the others, that covers the nature, society, perils, powers, and people of the world. Mm. Prompts and guides that you can weave together to form the outline of your setting. They don't delve into detailed specifics to give you plenty of space to fill in the gaps. Right, So it's not genre-specific, so we can go with where we go with this. So this world is... I feel three is probably the best one, but... Go through them all. Well, let's roll for it. Well, let's let's everybody, us, not all of us, no, let, let's have like one person roll for each bit. So, Martin, you spoke first. You get to roll for this one. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I did roll a three. <laughs> <laughs> so, Excellent. this world is past its prime. Decadence has taken its toll on a once glorious and beautiful world. Apathy, avarice, and greed have left it I little mean, more than a more pale than shadow thing. of itself. It does work really well, doesn't it? This is so there we go. Um, hang on, let me just scribble that down somewhere. Um, world Who's... three, and then the Who's next one, civilization. civilization. James, this is your role. All right, it is a seven. Um, civilization has retreated, to, retreated safety. to safety. So they've all gone into the virtual world because the world outside is grim and hostile. So a lot of people are living in this sort of semi-virtual state to reduce their oxygen intake. People who are unconscious don't use as much oxygen. World's oxygen levels are depleted. They don't use as much food because they're in a semi-catatonic state. So they're reducing their usage yeah, yeah. Base on by metabolic dropping into rates. this semi-catatonic state. Yeah, so Only the rich the stay awake, which is what my character is. My character's rich. It comes from this, oh, God, you're all in the simulation kind of background, where we've been swanning around while all these rich people deal with all the computational power of trying to fix the world while we sun it on our yachts. And I'm like, oh, no, you people are horrible. We're not doing that. The world is enreathed in aggressive biodiversity, keen to reclaim the land. So rather than that, we've got this digital biodiversity. We're looking at a post-pollution world. That works. And maybe the post-pollution is made like triffids and things. Yeah, maybe there could be horrible really things in the really real world. Yeah. Besides the dark, Graham, we fear... I think it's the same table as the one above. Yeah, it is. 
I think it's called. Oh, it in is. My, in my PDF. That'd be the one that he has not dated yet. Yeah. Should I roll or not? Roll it anyway, and we'll have a number at least. A uh, two. It's too small for me to see because of the screen. Uh, Doesn't matter that's... at this point because that's the previous table. And then Supernatural Forces <gasps> is the got... next one. We've got to the end of the PDF. No, we've there's... got to the end of yeah, the functional still... PDF. <laughs> roll the one or twelve, and Pete will fill in the blanks for us. Yeah, yeah he did say roll... he had notes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Roll the supernatural one. You're the second supernaturalist. Teeniest, tiniest D12 says two. Two twos. Two again. Two. And then after the supernatural is people the people want. want. And people want, they want, rolly, rolly, rolly. Ten. I really hope that ten is not a quiet life. Because <laughs> 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 we are so the bad guys at that point. Well, we kind of are the bad guys, but we're not. We're the good guy, bad guys. We're the we're the matrix. We're the guy, bad guy. We're the smash the system, bad guys. We are. Like, we're the smash the system. Like, we don't care if it's going to make you uncomfortable to be in the real yeah. world. That's where you need to be to fix things. Yeah. And all then right. at the end, does Martin go? And they've all dug their heads <laughs> in the sand. And we're like, no, the truth is out there. Smash the system. Like, yes. Help me accomplish my goals. And mine's halt, halt, like underneath like his motivation to smash the system save the people and then i can be in charge of it <laughs> <laughs> come one hey perfect timing there hey hey. hey hey oh my lord sorry about that worry sorry, not sorry. we've had a really 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 good chat well that's yeah. fantastic that's fantastic unfortunately my son is still a little bit ill and oh, my wife is not baby. feeling well herself so i just had to go and help for 40 minutes <laughs> yeah. try and get him to sleep i'm still not certain he's fully asleep but let's 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 roll <laughs> okay good how, news. How we did a lot good news is we finished our characters we know who they are where they are what they are wow. and we've done the number rolling for you for um the, the world. world building oh blimey for the so, world building yeah. Yeah. Well, we got the we ended up with a world of uh, sentient sofas where weasels are the currency. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is, this, is this Ben's joke for when I come back from... No, that's no, no that was just me. I've I... been thoroughly responsible. <laughs> he has, he has. Because no, was... Ben's talking, talking about weasels on the Discord. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> we did have a chat about whether rich people would have carried capybaras around and poor <laughs> people would have a pocket full of gerbils. That, well, that, but, that would be cool. To be fair, mean. he's clearly stressed out. Let's yeah, no, I'm going to say, to be fair, Ben did I've been standing in a hot, that. dark room cuddling a baby, so yeah. I'm just a bit like... <laughs> cool. Sorry, go on, Graham. No, no, we did actually make a real world, and it isn't, sadly, sentient sofas or something I just made up, although that would have been cool, to be fair. Uh, but no, yeah. do you want to explain Millie, as a lot of it was from you? Oh, was it? I, I think so. Corporation 23. Oh, yeah. Evil Corporation 23. Um, they did. Um, they, I created a wonderful um, utopian matrix style place. Um, okay. And they've basically stolen it from me. And everybody has to pay millions of pounds just to be in it. Um, what? And if you can't stay in it, then you become some sort of indentured processing brain server or something uh, cool. to pay for right. it. Cool. Three word oh. answer leverage, matrix, yeah. yep. dystopia. Wow, that's that's quite a three word answer. Yeah, we're the leverage yeah. crew in a matrix based dystopian setting. Okay, okay, we don't, we don't know if we are or outside, yeah. we don't we know, don't know. we don't know if we're in or out of the simulation. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent. So, should we, should we go around the characters then? And if one I know you've done it probably already, but it'd be good to have like a summary with like It's not like you can play the video skills. on demand now, is it? No. No, exactly. No. Exactly. Oh, I feel just like for a I little bit of a summary. Name, but I'm going to re reject a mortal human name and pick something like Princess Space Kitten. Cool. <laughs> cool. I feel like... I mean, yeah. surely in the future, everyone's going to have like emojis built into their name and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And punctuation. Definitely. Why not? Think of Put it. that all on the overlay for next week. <laughs> yeah. So Millie, let's begin with your. Let give me give me a quick summary of your character. 
um, what, like a one, two, three, four, well, five sentence summary of my character? Maybe, maybe. Uh-huh. And then what that means? And then what that right. means? I was born to rule a kingdom means I programmed a, a beautiful utopia. Um, mm-hmm. And I trust in the natural order, which means everybody has rights and basic rights to access all these things. Cool. Um, the world taught me a dark truth that is things you create end up twisted by corporations. Um, people call me an oracle because I speak of a beautiful future um, and I seek revenge upon evil corporation 23. Cool. I like it. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ben. I was born to wealth and privilege because my family didn't have to go into the life-saving matrix to reduce their carbon footprint. We were able to stay out of the system. I trust in the weakness of others because the one thing I've seen in my time above or out of the world is that people are easily manipulated Mm -hmm. and that they can be led and treated badly. Cool. Cool. The world taught me the old ways in that I know that once upon a time we lived outside of the computer, Mm -hmm. that we had actual relationships, that we knew people and dealt with things properly. People called me a meddler because I tried to wake up the other wealthy people, but they weren't interested. (laughs) Okay. And I seek a lost treasure, which is a a reputed AI somewhere out there in the internet that might Ooh. be able to help us i like it that's very cool very cool stat wise i have yep. guile three vigor psyche two vigor two education four occult four training two i've got shadow manipulate two weird one composure one and tactics one. Oh, okay okay um Millie, what were your stats? Uh, Guile, three. Psych, three. Vigor and education are two. Occult is four. And training is three. Cool. Occult, four, training, three. Cool. Okay. Right. Graham. So uh, I have ended up with... uh, So I was at the uh, Little Little Rock annual inter-county state cat competition uh, when a momentous world-shaking event happened. So... (laughs) I was a, a crap journalist, or at least a journalist shoved off right to the side. Um, uh-huh. But I, I was born amidst whatever storm and thunder news event happened and became like the face of it to uh, become known to the people. Uh, cool. I trust in a greater power, which in which case happens to be the truth. Um, the world taught me that knowledge is power, and I don't want today's mm-hmm. news to be tomorrow's truth. Um, people call me a rebel because I rather insist on telling the actual truth rather than the the message, as it were. And I uh-huh. seek the ultimate power, which is essentially to just be believed. Like no one will question my word; they will just okay. whatever I tell the public. They will, be will believe. Okay. Exactly. So I am uh, some sort of journalist. Okay. Cool. I like um, it. I like it. And you I don't am... know whether you're in or out of the the thing we decided between us that it'd be better if we don't know if we're in the simulation or not so maybe we're all okay. wasting our time maybe we're part of the distraction <laughs> who knows or maybe we when, really are when we watched the it. matrix 2 um as a group of friends many 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 years ago when we came to the end of matrix 2 and before they made the mistake of doing the matrix 3 one of the questions that we had at the end of it is what if they coming out of the matrix into a second level matrix yeah, yeah. and that the next level oh, of yeah. the matrix up from um the sort of uh, zion zion setting was mm-hmm. basically like a featureless hospital room yeah just one just a load of brains in jars brains in jars or yeah. even people well, in it- containers still but that level of thing, thing, you know, how it's many like, levels of yeah. internet are there? How many levels of simulation? It's like are the thirteenth floor. Have you yeah. seen that film? That's a good film. Right, right, excellent, good musings, uh, James. Um, so I said before, born in muck and toil, uh, trust not naught but steel. I believe action must be taken. People call me a leader, and I seek a worthy opponent. So when I rolled all this initially, um, it it screams like blacksmith knight kind of hardened soldier yeah but fitting it into this world um we were trying to like i was born 
um, I can't afford to live in the mate this system that Millie's character was made. I don't have the the haptic bypass suits. I don't have any of this stuff. So I learned and I taught myself how to code and build and do it myself. And I've Ooh. been um, working my way up and releasing access software, like proxy software, freeware, because I believe that um, information and IT and access should be free for the people. And that action must be taken to stop the degradation of society and just it being the wealthy and the elite that get this mm-hmm. new world. Um, and they, that's why they call me a leader because I'm trying to to give this to everyone, not just like the w- rich people who can afford it. And cool. um, yeah, and I, I seek to kind of topple this, this corporate culture. And I, I see that as my worthy opponent. I'm, I'm basically like, yeah, socialist oh. Sean Bean trying to, bring down the system <laughs> with, uh, with sharing <laughs> excellent excellent that's great love it uh, and and martin um yeah so to add to the mystery of the matrix and the many layers my origin is i was born beneath a dark star which to me means i was born somewhere which doesn't match up to any of the worlds either without or within the matrix Ooh, so like it. um I trust only my master, which is a rogue AI that allowed me to get into the Matrix itself. Nice. Um, the world taught me that death comes soon. Everybody's immortal, and the mortals mm. do die, which well, goes into the cause. Which mm-hmm. is, people call me an outsider, which for some reason I'm different. And you are code. Different, yeah. <laughs> and cause, I seek ultimate power. I seek to rid myself of this mortal shell that I believe I have and upload myself ah. to the AI. So you're basically, you're Agent Smith. You've, you've come from the machine world into a, a meat sack. Oh, could be. I could uh, be a literal program. It could be a program. <laughs> uh, that, that's brilliant. That's fantastic, you guys. Um, uh, uh, looks like it was good that I went away for a while. <laughs> so you had, had a good... So, so we're, yeah, really we're, kind good. Of, we're kind of verging on a kind of... Um, so we've got a matrixy, cyberpunky style thing going on with a question around what layer of reality is reality? Yeah. Or maybe they're all none of them. Because we're all on one level working together to expose another <laughs> sure. level. But we might be in a second level. Well, it sounds that like level, and there most could be another of multiverse you are from now one area and martin's probably from another and you've all met in the middle to try and bring it down from inside mm-hmm. possibly mm-hmm. possibly who knows maybe i'll have fun with that we've done um, the world roles for you oh, okay okay so we're ready well, why don't world. we why don't we finish off the characters okay and then we can mm-hmm. you can tell me what those are and then for next time we can touch on it at the beginning and then we'll start uh, an adventure with these characters sounds good so yeah. what we have left to do the anatomy of your character you need to create your defense attributes okay now these are numbers that uh, opponents will have to roll over or effects will have to roll over to hurt you um so toughness is equal to four plus your vigor toughness can be improved with armor um, I've seen an old rule that I need to remove. Uh, evasion is equal to guile plus vigor plus training. Evasion. Well, that's good for me. Yep. Not for me. I am squishy boy. So evasion is used when things like um, explosions go off. There'll be like an effect five, a strength five explosion will go off. So I'll roll five dice, and every one of them that hits your evasion or higher means that you're okay. But if they don't, then you're okay. taking a point of damage. Big Air James, cool guys walk away from explosions. Yeah, you can't explode me. My evasion's 11. Oh. Are you okay, I need to get 11. Sorry, I need to get 11 or more to hurt you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Something that opposes your evasion. Uh, and then defiance is equal to occult, psyche, and education. Oh, yeah. What was that called? Sorry. Defiance. Defiance. Oh, my defiance is 11. Well, there you go. <laughs> so you're mentally resilient and, and kind of 
good against manipulation and things like that. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, six eleven six. It's like I'm rubbish, but I'll dodge like hell. <laughs> the first one was yeah. guile and vigor, was it? So your toughness is equal to four plus your vigor. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay, so have we got those? Ben, mm -hmm. what are yours? Six toughness, seven evasion, and ten defiance. Oh, cool. Millie? Uh, toughness of six, an evasion of eight, and a defiance of nine. Cool. Okay, Graham? Yeah. Exactly the same, six, eight, nine. Ooh. Okay. And James, you were six, eleven, six, was six, it? Six, yeah. Wow. And I'm six, uh, six, and eleven. Six, six, eleven. Wow, there yeah. you go. That's cool. Now, the good news is toughness can be increased by wearing armour. Mm -hmm. Why have that? Yeah. Uh, right, your survival attributes, your wounds, vitality, and your peril. Your, I can still hear the music. Uh, peril is zero. For every four points of peril, you should see a little peril track. Mm -hmm. For every four points of peril, all difficulty roll, all the difficulties of your rolls go up by one. So a normal roll, which would need one success, will need two once you get to four points of peril. Yep, and you can have a maximum of... 12 peril there you go um <laughs> uh if you lose all your vitality you instantly gain four peril things like that go on your wounds is equal to double your vigor score and your vitality is equal to your vigor psyche and training yeah now the the vitality is an interesting one because when you oh Millie, look at that that's fantastic uh when you when you take damage it first comes off your vitality and then once that's all gone you gain four points of peril and you then start losing your wounds however you can also spend your vitality so if you are one success short of what you need to succeed you can spend a vitality to get that last success and achieve your target. So there is a kind of success at a cost kind of mechanic in the game as well. And we can narrate, you know, how that vitality loss is done through you stressing yourself or focusing really hard or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, anyone with powers, be very aware that vitality is used up by powers. Um, and let's see where we get to next. So we've done, so we've done all of those. So you can see the little pluses in the circles. Put those numbers in there, and that shows you what we need to roll. So, if I were to roll uh, to hit you, I'd roll the 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 opponent's um, relevant skill, and if I get a success, then I would roll the weapon strength against your toughness to do damage. How do I know um, what my wounds and vitality are again? I was the wounds. The it's, it's okay. Wounds is equal to double your vigor. Oh. No, oh. it's run and hide time, Millie. Yeah. And vitality is equal to vigor plus psyche plus training. Which is run and hide behind something. <laughs> How much, so basically, um, peril you want to get some armor. Sorry? How much peril look do we have, sorry? Peril zero. Yep. You don't you start with that. any peril. And you get two luck. You have two luck every oh. session. Oh, cool. And that's a reroll. You can reroll. You can spend a luck to reroll any or all of the dice you just rolled. Nice. Yep. Cool. Okay. So that should be all your stats sorted out. We've got your legend, got your attributes, got your skills, got your <coughs> defense and survival. Um, now, what we need to do next is trappings. So, um, trappings. Uh, there are some that are very specific, but then things like armor and weapons, because this is settingless, a lot of the trappings are uh, there for you to flavor and skin how you want to have them. So armor will come in three, you can get a shield, but armor comes in three varieties, skirmish, combat and battle, indicating they're getting their meteor, light, medium and heavy just sounded really boring. So skirmish, combat and battle. Uh, and they each provide a toughness bonus. And uh, this is page 21 of the PDF, if you're if sure, yeah, checking. Yeah. Um, and basically what happens is you, when you buy a suit of, or get a suit of armor, 
you pick features and flaws for it as shown on the on the um, armor table skirmish armor gets one feature one floor combat armor has one feature and battle armor has two features but one floor there we go lovely artwork um now when you first get them you just have to take them like that when you buy them or find them later on they may have more features or more floors if you add a feature you double the cost of it if you add a floor you half the cost of it so you can effectively build master crafted armor by adding features to a suit of armor suit of battle armor. if you add another feature one, that's 100 and if you add another one it's 200 if you add another one 400 it, you can also buy off a floor by doubling the cost as well so there's ways to make different suits of armor and they each have a toughness bonus so shield gives you one skirmish gives you one combat two battle three and um on the next page I believe we have the features and flaws of the different things with more lovely artwork. So who had, uh, I think James had skirmish armor. I do indeed, yeah. Did anybody else get any armor? Don't Nobody think got so. a ton of cash. Oh, what, uh, what I forgot to say is everyone gets 2d12 currency. Ooh. And as this is a game session, you can use your luck to reroll that 2d12. <laughs> Well then, I, I think I'll keep an eight and re-roll a four. Oh, and some people well, have got re-rolls. I rolled yeah. three, so can I roll both 15. dice again? Yes, any or that all one of the dice. Two luck? Where do you That's write your money luck. down? Um, uh, I printed oh, this like good... one piece, oh. and it's just at the bit. Right, the thank you. I got a just... twelve and an eight. That means down have... there, isn't it? Eighty. Yeah, it is on. Currency. It is on the sheet. I just printed them off one key. Okay. Apologies. That's a human error, know. not a PDF error. Huzzah <laughs> for my fabulous wealth. Right, so Ben's got 87 currency. Bear in mind, I had 65 before we rolled. It, is that including still got 22 out of 24. Is okay. pretty good. I did get 22 out of 24, which uh, is pretty is, good going. That is bloody good. So has everyone got some currency then? Yes. You know how rich cool. I am? I've got mm -hmm. seven. Seven. Well, I'm not against you sharing the money out if you want to. It's fine. I was born in muck and toil. It's <laughs> it works. Okay, so James, you have a suit of skirmish armor. You now need to, to give a good example to the viewers. You now need to pick a feature for that armor and a floor for that armor. That's really uh, cool. So there are six of each. Uh, and future expansions will add more features and more flaws and i'll probably theme them a bit more along the genres um so there'll be like little little add-on books that if you decide oh we're going to do a fantasy game you can pull out the fancy one and go ah yeah here you go there's a few more things um but the armor features you can have camouflage cover effortless impressive offensive not not <laughs> offensive not offensive and pockets uh and then uh, you got an idea of which one you wanted to go for james sorry oh um i think some of them don't fit particularly with what i want to do i'm gonna go with pockets it's probably okay. not the most efficient but it makes sense to me cool and i'm an engineer with just pockets full of stuff yeah yeah and it's like maybe you know, some light armor that's got like webbing and little, you know, yeah. little. It's those workman pants with a huge pockets down the whole thigh. Yeah. yeah. The knee pads. I've just, I've just got yeah, a tool yeah, yeah. belt full of stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Okay, so you've got skirmish arm with pockets, and then your floor. You have to pick bulky, clumsy, gaudy, partial, shoddy, <laughs> or weakness. Um, I love the idea of gaudy pockets but no <laughs> <laughs> go with it's just shoddy, got slogans all over it shoddy. just like technology okay. should be free yeah you can't I think that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. okay so pockets. shoddy armor is cheap and hastily put together each time three or more damage gets through shoddy armor in one hit its toughness bonus is reduced by one until repaired yeah. i'm all right with that oh cool. okay does yeah, anybody else have armor or want to buy it armor I have just bought some battle armor. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am very squishy. Okay, so that adds three to your toughness, which I think brings it to nine. 
Yes. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You got to think people have to roll to hit you first. Yeah. Before they then roll to do damage. Uh, I'm going for effortless, impressive, and gaudy, because I'm okay. going for like a a one piece skin suit thing, but with a force field Sequins. type effect to it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. So the reason so, it's gaudy I is like because when you've, you've got, got it advertising. Active, like no, no, said. it's gaudy because when you turn it on, you are literally glowing because you've got <laughs> oh, a cool. force field on. It's okay. effortless because, you know, it's press a button and it's on. Yeah. yeah. It's impressive because I'm literally glowing, you know? Yeah, because normally armor takes a number of, where are we? A <clears throat> number of minutes and don to rules, twice yeah. the armor's toughness to don or doff. So that would take six minutes to put it on or take it off. Whereas now... It takes you three rounds to turn it on and turn it off. Yeah. So it's pretty reactive. It's so pretty I'm going for like a June effortless. style personal body shield. Okay. That is cool. I like it. Um, excellent. Okay. <laughs> Anybody- Someone in the chat yeah. said he's his own nightlight, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I am nightlight. Absolutely. Not- Absolutely. I'm have to take combat armor, spend all my currency on combat armor. Okay. Cool. I also um, get a free weapon, which is nice. And I was thinking about taking cover. Yeah. Uh, be able to take cover even there's no cover available in the zone. And if I am a, mm-hmm. a program, it's just that I am like becoming part of or shifting within the actual matrix itself. Cool. I like it. I like it. With an almost kind of little slight fractal thing around the edges. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cover is handy because cover, allow- if, if there are ranged attacks at you, cover makes it more difficult for them to shoot you depending on how far away they are yeah that's two touches off us i think yeah. oh yeah two toughness from combat armor and one bulk Wonderful. now we should talk about bulk you can carry a number of bulky items equal to your vigor score plus one okay yeah. and every five regular items count towards as count as one bulky item Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, anybody else for armor? If not, how much we is, go? Can I afford anything with fifteen money? Well, a skirmish is ten. A shield is five. Okay. Do you have any weapons already? I, You've got a thrown I have a weapon. A thrown weapon. Yeah. 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 There is a feature called returning that you can get for a thrown weapon, so you can have like a a, a lightsaber boomerang. Sweet, uh, <laughs> or it's on a string, you know, like a blade <laughs> on a rope kind of thing. Um, did you want to buy armor, Graham? Uh, no, no, I'll leave it for now. I think, okay, I don't think it would. I was thinking about it, I was like, it doesn't really go with the newscaster thing. It's okay. April or real from behind this huge plate of metal. How is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's jump to kits then. That's uh, a few pages later because I think some people have kits. Mm-hmm. There go. Kits have, they include some stuff um, and they have a bulk score for all of that stuff. So all of that stuff together counts as one bulk. Um, and as I said earlier on, these kits, you can't just buy those, those included items and get your die bonus. The kit is about, you've got extra bits in there it's like you've personalized it. You know how these things work together um, so much so that when you use your kit for the relevant skill, you gain a die when okay. doing it. Yeah. Cool. Um, and in there, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff. So Ben sold their assassin kit to get 43 currency back because uh, there were two. Uh, but in the other assassin kit, there's a basic melee weapon. So we'll do weapons in a, in a minute. Uh, camouflage, poison vial, and a small container. So camouflage and a small container in the equipment list, and poison vial is in the consumable list. Um, so who else has got a kit? I have a medical kit. Medical Me. kit. Me. I have a okay. commander kit and a travel kit. Wow. There you go. So things like data device and sensory device they're they're named that way because it could be a data device could be a scroll could be a book could be a tablet there's many different things that you could use based on your genre you know it could be a stone tablet 
<laughs> with cuneiform carved into it you know um but in some way you've got information in the in that device to help you with those kind of tasks um sensory devices could be binoculars uh could be a scanner could you know various other various other things have a think about what you might want it to be um and small container is like a bag or a sack or a briefcase you know a large container is like a rucksack uh, or a trunk or something up to you how you want to how you want to do that graham what was your kit it's an explorer kit explorer kit there you go compass large light sensory device small container light is very important in this setting in this work in this game sorry yeah, you know, if you don't have light. light you gain peril um uh, and a large light will illuminate uh for uh, i think it's four hours all right uh, uh, like whereas... a camera rig attached to my back brilliant perfect perfect um who else had a kit i've got I a medicine kit, kit. So millie had a medical kit healing salve small container tools medicine so mm -hmm. tool, tools allow you to do stuff that you can't do with your hands they don't add extra dice but they allow you to, for example, perform surgery mm -hmm. yeah, and heal people. Uh, and a trauma pack, which is like a first aid kit or a bunch of leaves and ointments or something that allows you to Undulance. restore people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, a USB with the right code in to uh, plug really into someone. So ugly that if... patch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Nanodox. Yeah. yeah. So Ben with the assassin, the assassin kit, kit. We've been been through, haven't we? Poison Basic pile. Basic melee camouflaged poison container. Yep. yep. James, what was your kit? Oh, your commander um, and commander and traveller. Yeah. Traveller. Oh yeah, traveller. Large container, portable shelter, rations, water container, waterproof garment. So think about how that might translate into to. I've uh, just got this. basically anything you need. I, I think yeah, you're yeah. homeless. James doesn't have a fixed abode. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm a proper socialist. I don't believe in property. I oh, have so everything yeah. I need in my kids. Full on Marxist. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, and then last, what we're going to do is we're going to do weapons. That's on the next slide. Uh, that looks like a familiar gun down there. Exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I, I'm thinking plasma. <laughs> <laughs> Energistic, I think, is the right term. Um, Fair so enough. There are, th there are three types of weapons. Melee weapons, ranged weapons, and thrown weapons. Melee weapons use your prowess, but their range is engaged. And um, this operates as... Bodeca uh, has a zone system rather than specific ranges. Uh, if you're in a, if you're in the same zone, that's called close. If you move into close combat, you are then engaged. One zone away is short. Two zones away is medium. Three is long, and four is extreme. Uh, so ranged uses observe, and is long range, and then thrown uses might, and is short range. Uh, and you can see the strength. That's how many dice you roll to inflict damage against your opponent's toughness when using those right. weapons. And then there are the special features. So ranged weapons come with the ammo and large claws and gain one feature. Um, melee has a feature in a floor and throne has a feature in a floor. Um, could... Sorry, go could I sell my thrown weapon and buy a range weapon? I just can't see a reporter just carrying around like a hand axe or something. <laughs> like <laughs> casually, sure. like, yeah, you know, somebody heckles you, me. You might have a grenade. Hand axe and wham. A pistol does make more sense, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, <clears throat> like, defense <throat> rather than offense. Um <laughs> Like, I was trying to think of what I would have, and I was like, well, she's not cool enough for a shuriken. Um, she's not skilled or athletic enough for something like a hand axe. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, a future. Could be an explosive. Yeah. If you, give it the, if you give it the blast feature, but then it's a one-shot. 
Yeah, I just I don't know about a, a journalist like blowing up a crowd of people. Um, yeah, no, sure, sure. I'm just gotcha. giving just giving options. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did say a Molotov <laughs> initially because I was going to yeah, be like yeah, yeah. Uh, a demagogue type, but yeah, uh, not yeah. anymore apparently. Um, so if I sell <laughs> sell the thing, how much money would Could that be? An get electro. Me? Oh, okay. Like you a just get stunned or something. You just get you just get five for it if you if you. Okay, I probably I, I quite the idea of like maybe an, a, a net or a stun dart or something sounds uh, acceptable. Does a taser count as a thrown weapon because of prongs? No, a taser no, net that's arranged. A net that net. electrocutes people when you throw it at them. Yeah, yeah, that's like such a you know you can just like just essentially slap somebody with it from like two feet away. Just make sure you turn it on first. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta throw it, and it turns on when you release it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. If I'm holding it, then I also get electrocuted. Yeah. Um, oh, what's it from? You can, you can sell it and buy a range weapon. That's fine. Absolutely. I might fine. buy a range weapon as well because I'm supposed to be like a street level crime reporter thing. Yeah. So, so a range weapon is thirty. Well, I'm not thirty. Buying anything then? I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a melee weapon costs ten, and a throwing weapon costs five. I was going to buy a melee weapon, which leaves me with 12 currency left. So Can I if... borrow three currency? Yes. Thank you. Um... Graham, I have four currency left you can borrow if you want. I've only got 15. So if so I what sold... do you need? I would need 10 because I can sell my range to get 20. Between Ben and Millie, you can get 10, can't you? Yeah, I've got nine left. So... Yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. In which case, yeah, I will have a ranged weapon then. Um. And I, yeah. don't, I don't mind sharing all of that because, um, uh, you know, I'm some sort of optimist. We can all live in James's <laughs> tent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So who's got ranged weapons? Graham, um, uh -huh. Ben. Yeah. Anybody else? No? Okay. So they have the ammo feature. So ammo reliant ranged weapons begin with an ammo value of 10 plus. When an attack with this weapon results in a critical, which is rolling doubles on your dice mm -hmm. you must roll against this value use a number of dice equal to 12 minus the weapon strength if the roll is a failure the weapon is out of ammo mm -hmm. if you discover a weapon of the same type you may re-roll this ammo test a success meaning you've recovered ammunition between adventures these weapons have a maintenance cost of 10 percent of the total cost to supply ammunition for your next adventure so we don't count bullets we don't you know mm -hmm. check how many arrows you've got but it has an ammo value of 10 plus. Now you can buy, you can get the feature capacity, which reduces that to an eight plus, making it easier for you to pass your ammo roll. That's one of the features you could get, but it has an ammo floor. It also has a large floor, which means it requires two hands to use. I have taken Is... the folding feature for okay. mine because i envisage it kind of folding back into like a predator style shoulder cannon cool i thought you meant to like fold it in half and shoot people around like, corners no or I, I meant like a folding stock so you can like secrete it upon your person no again i'm thinking sort of um fairly high tech kit yeah you'll still need to use your hands to use it though so like it folds out. So you have to it like folds up, but it. you pull it out, and it's like, and it folds out into a rifle. Oh, yeah, perfect, kind of perfect, love it, love it. I've gone. Looks I've like gone, a backpack strap isn't. Um, a melee nice. weapon is folding because I can't afford anything else. But in my head, it's just like like a flick knife kind of folding <laughs> thing. <laughs> sure. But I've gone with my weapon floor of being large. So I like the idea that it's just a massively <laughs> intricately folded. Giant spanner. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, yeah. hang on. <laughs> I've put the same like, things on my melee weapon, so I'm going for the um, expanding staff thing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 like a bow yep. staff thing. Yeah, so it's a two handed weapon when you pop it out, but it folds yep. down into like a little thing like yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. like the ones like in it. Babylon 5. Um, or I, Andromeda. I need to scoot up to look at where are the weapons. Oh, no, yeah, I need to scoot down. down. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there we go. go. All right. Yeah, there's a yeah. Um, because I've got a melee weapon. Um, 
There are, there are just a few features on the previous page. Oh, are there? Just one thing I couldn't get get past. Oh, cool. So uh, oh, you can put blast on a melee weapon, but once it's used, it's gone. Um, Is that like dynamite play. tied to a stick? <laughs> like yeah, or like <laughs> a like a one shot thunder hammer from Warhammer Forty K. Spear with kind of thing. Touch explosions on the end of. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can't. It won't. It won't work again. <laughs> it's essentially um, like a stick at the end of it. Yeah. Yes. Um, so while Millie is reading, I, I envision that April mm -hmm. or Real will have like some kind of pistol. Um, so it has to be two handed. It, it's like a rifle. To begin with, or you could use the feature on your weapon to pay off the large floor. Okay. What are the other floors, please? Other flaws are um, there's ammo. So there's clumsy, increases the speed of all attacks with the weapon by one, so it's slower to use. Yeah. Dense makes it bulk, increases its bulk by one because it's like made of some ridiculously dense material. Fragile, um, every time you roll a critical using this weapon, reduces its strength value by one. Uh, large, two handed, and weak. Um, although well crafted, they are less effective, reduce the weapon's strength value by one. Fragile, you can repair then. Fragile, as it starts to get weaker. You don't need to pick a floor for your ranged weapon, though. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. I thought I had no, to. No, um, with the ranged weapon, it has ammo and large to begin with. So you just pick a feature, or you can use that feature to buy off large. I think I'm going to take ammo because I have zero cash. So I will attempt to conserve it. She couldn't wear, yeah. I mean, she would quite like a, a lovely uh, pistol, but uh, has no money to get one at the moment. So maybe like a, an SMG or something that's fairly hideable, and we'll take the ammo. Okay. Uh, what skill does that use? Observe. Observe. Okay, at least I have one dice in that. No, one point. Mm -hmm. What's your guile score? Four. Okay, so you roll four dice, and you need a ten or more. So you're actually yeah. pretty good with your SMG. <clears throat> okay, who's got some more weapons to sort out? I've got a melee weapon. I have decided yep. that it will be both powerful and fragile. Oh. <laughs> okay, so powerful increases its strength value by two. So it's quite a dangerous weapon. It might be sharper or a lightsaber or something like that. But fragile means... If you roll a critical with it, its strength value goes down by one. So mm -hmm. it can last longer, even though it's fragile, because you put yeah. the strength up. So that's good. So that's a strength nine weapon now. So you roll nine dice to do damage to people with your super melee weapon. Yeah. Martin, did you have any weapons or no. armor or things? Armor. Oh, we need to talk about your powers, don't we? Yeah. Have you picked your powers? Mm -hmm. I have. Oh, cool, cool. We'll do that in a second. Uh, James, what else have you got to do? I am done. You're done. Okay, oh, cool. Right. So I think we've just got powers to do, and then we're probably good to go. I know it's getting late for you, James. It is. It is uh, half past one in the morning. Okay. <laughs> He's on holiday, though. He can just have a swim in the pool. Yeah, tomorrow. I mean, I'm, all I've got to do tomorrow is get up at about 10, have breakfast, go for a swim, and later oh, on no. I'm doing karaoke. So it's not oh. like... Oh, yeah. oh wow. I'm not okay. struggling. Well, we're going to play for another two hours then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So we've done all weapons and armor. There are uh -huh. also there there is also some equipment that you can buy, just single items. Um, all the things that are included in kits are available in the equipment list. There's also the consumables, acid, healing salve, stimulants. Um, various things that are, are quite handy. Quite I misunderstood when you said acid. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> acid vial. Or some Side of beef corrosive substance. <laughs> Side of beef. No. Um, no. Rations are in the equipment because they're not, they're not palatable. Mm. Um, <laughs> right. So we've done all the equipment and kits. We can sort out any other last bits. Let's go on to powers now we're gonna do martin last who else had powers billy and graham not me Excellent. <clears throat> okay so powers have a vitality cost a casting time the duration of the power and the range and there is a uh, a selection of them 
Millie, have you had a look <coughs> at the powers? Yeah, I, I want to take Valiant Heart. Valiant Heart. Okay, so through your mystical power, you gird your allies against the creeping doom around them. Rate how your character imbues them with supernatural courage. Uh, you can target... Uh, oh, yeah, I've noticed a couple of things I need to uh, need to change in here. Um, target creature in range of all perform. Target's defiance increases by one, plus one for each success rolled uh, on your test. So it automatically does one, even if you fail that roll. So it's not contingent on the roll. Mm -hmm. It costs you one vitality, and it is an action <coughs> with a speed of three. So when okay. you're in combat, it takes three okay. ticks around the clock for that to happen. Cool. Graham, have you picked your power? I have. So I asked the chat for a little bit of input, and we've okay. gone with Augur's Eye. So it's to okay, represent cool. her ability to connect the dots between various things that are happening, and also the mm -hmm. whole getting the your individual sources from the street sort of thing. Oh, cool. Okay. Excellent. Right. And then, uh, Martin, how many powers did you have? Is it three? Two. 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 Yeah, especially okay. two. Okay. Um, what have you gone for? Uh, I've gone for Blur, um, okay. which I've done re reskin to acceleration protocols to hack into okay, cool. uh, mines I and like speed it. them up. And Ray of Doom, which has been reskinned to <laughs> feedback loop. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty. Pretty good, that one. Cool. Okay. So, excellent. So we have our powers. My powers are rich and clever. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that makes you That's Batman, yeah? <laughs> yeah, Batman. <laughs> I mean, my powers are hit stuff. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Makes you Superman. <laughs> okay, cool. So we have five very interesting characters hopefully with cool little stories around them already. And mm. as you see from the kind of um, uh, those details, you can start to think about what kind of world all those kind of characters would come together in. And I think the closest one in my kind of archetypes in this is the neon dystopia, but with a digital twist, mm. you know, full on kind of net runner, matrix, all that kind of stuff, which is cool. Very, very cool. Uh, I've written in the simulation question mark um, <laughs> uh, and you said you rolled some dice for me for the world we did mm -hmm. we did we one did. each okay cool I like that one each there's five yep so Martin rolled the world which was right. three okay and that was what was it what's it called this world uh, is it's past prime. its prime yeah mm -hmm. yep which is so why this I world made is, the matrix yeah. cool yeah what was uh, the next one? The next one was Civilization Has. Yeah. And I believe, was it James or was it? Yeah, Retreated to Safety. Retreated to Safety, yeah. Of okay, the Matrix. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so that's a seven. Okay, cool. And the other ones aren't in there, are there? Yeah, and then it all oh, fell no. apart. So the third one is Besides the Dark We Fear. Graham rolled, we rolled two. That. Two. Vile Tyranny. Ooh. That Evil is Corporation perfect. 23. Yeah. Well done, yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah. The bastards. <laughs> the next one is Powers Come From. Now, I think we could pick this one because we've got a sense of that from it feels like powers operate inside the matrix mm -hmm. and they are like code or some sort of mental, mm -hmm. mental power. So I think we could... Um, the closest thing is probably mental discipline and eight. What's a two? Because I think yeah, Millie rolled a two. two so. Rune and rote. So that's like arcane spells. That's and... code. Yeah, it's I code. think that's yeah. code yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> look at that. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. See, it's oh, look how cool this this stuff yeah, is. It's like <laughs> Rune um, is the back door and rote is I learned how to program by just, you know, working hard. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And what did you roll for the people want? I rolled a 10. I rolled a 10. Salvation. Oh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Perfect. That, that Perfect. was good. We're hoping it was That is a fantastic. Life. Okay, cool, cool. Excellent. Right, so we've 
hopefully everyone enjoyed that process as well yeah. oh, it seems enjoyable. to make yeah. sense cool okay cool uh, and well next time we'll get into um let me just put a link for the backer kit uh in the chat because you can actually still get a hold of this game if you're interested in it what's been quite cool in doing this is i've seen a few things where i've i've been the rules have been as i said kind of morphing and gelling and there's a few bits where i've got the wrong word in there or an old name for a skill like i used to composure was called cool at one point um uh but I've, I've yeah that's what they use in a slay cool that's what was the fear yeah, thing again? That was from Warhammer. What Peril. Was the fear one. Yeah, it's oh, a Warhammer uh, thing. Fear. To FIP. Um, fear was uh, vile tyranny. So tyranny. Uh, enslavement. Yeah. So, so just the, so that my notes remain complete. So with the peril, what happens is darkness is the key thing that drives people to fear. You know, being in the dark uh, is kind of ubiquitous across grim dark worlds mm -hmm. you know that this is bad and maybe that's the code fading away or maybe that's the matrix going silent and all those kinds of things and you can kind of put a spin on darkness for what your particular world is but then you add another element which when it comes up and when there are story beats around that people have to test for peril uh so when like glitches people get or captured or maybe yeah glitches could be glitches could be a thing or if if the corporation exerts its force and rewrites the matrix around you to do something <laughs> then you might have to suffer peril make a peril check There's because you're witnessing gardeners the... from ground force turn up <laughs> but there's um i mean besides the dark we fear there are things like the others file tyranny we fear for our sanity we fear those with powers we fear the forces of evil. We fear eternal damnation. So they're all on different themes. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I mentioned in the, uh, you probably showed it earlier on then, the building your world section, is where to, which one first? Which first, characters or world? And one can inform the other um, and can mean that, yeah, what first? There you go. So if you do your characters first, you might then pick some of the world ones to tie it into the things you've been figuring out. Or if you pick the world first then you might go oh there's a couple of character character steps that make a bit more sense it's just um just you, you can know, see where, how where it do works you want to both ways mm. exactly exactly mm -hmm. i just wanted to uh, address that in the uh, in the game there so that's cool right so we've got characters we've got a cool party we've got a cool concept we've got a world that we're going to inhabit and uh, next next week we're going to get into some Neon dystopia matrix shenanigans. Style shenanigans. Woo -woo. Fighting against the vile tyranny of Corporation 23. <laughs> cool. Excellent. Brilliant. Right. Brilliant. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, so James can head off Sweet. to bed. Um, hopefully, everyone had a good view of the game. Everyone got to see a bit about it, a bit of the PDF as well. This will be going up on YouTube. So if you've only just joined us, um, you'll be able to catch us on our YouTube channel uh, later as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. Um, what have we got going on for the rest of the week? Tonight, there is Masters a few hours time. Nali -tep -tep. Master of Nali -tep -tep. Uh, Matt and his, uh, his crazy now, North American can learn how to say the word. Um, there we go. Um, having, having lots of fun. Um, with there's a reading of, a of the will yeah yep. yeah yeah so that's going to be fun find out what goes um, on there tomorrow we've got Achtung Cthulhu uh, everybody's going down the well everybody's going, going down the well, well and there's horrible horrible things going that's going to happen and it is the finale uh, it's the last one. Oh, it's the last one. Oh, okay that's what well, i was we know told what... yesterday <laughs> okay cool cool <laughs> excellent everyone and they're all going down a well that's going to go mad well. <laughs> excellent yeah. Uh, Thursday, Millie. Anything going on, um, on Thursday? An alien queen's going to climb off a, a a skiff and blow up the Tampa Tam. What? That's and it's my all plan. Cash's fault. It's all Cash's fault. I go away for one episode. <laughs> no, we all know there's an alien queen that has stowed away upon um, our escape vessel from the Talos station, and um, at some point she's going to make herself known on the Tam. 
<clears throat> Great. We get to do the end of Aliens. Yeah, it's, it's all fine. Annoying, She'll do a TripAdvisor review and that's it. Yeah, she's just going to be like, <laughs> food is crap. But going back to Cryo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, more Alien Frontier War. Would not brood there. again. We don't have Blades in the Dark on Thursday night, do we? I don't think we not do this week. Thursday, no. Okay. Not this week. And then Friday, Ben. Second to last Vampire, Hot Vampire Summer. Hot. Hot Vampire Summer. Oh, yeah. Excellent. 1995, the vampires are like messing with IT startup companies in a tech park. <laughs> Jugular. Jugular. <laughs> cool. Okay, right. Well, uh, that will take us back round to next Monday. Ben, what's planning for next Monday? More world building? Who knows? <laughs> Craziness. Craziness. Someone's doing something on Monday. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. We'll do. We'll be here. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, players, for having a go with my game and uh, embracing the process. Sorry, I had to step away for quite some no time worries. there in the middle of it. Um, and uh, thanks very much. We've been Garbag Games, and we'll see you later on. Shortly. Later. Yes. Later.